They have to unmute it so that they can answer? Um, they have to unmute they on it. They have to Mike, I got your, uh, uh, your email here. Maybe you could just tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, I got they have your profile. Okay, yeah, we have your profile. So just, maybe just give it the other words. I don't know how far back you want me to go. So I want to raise the New Bedford Mass. Spent my teen years running from the police, so my dad suggested that I join him, and that's how I ended up in Portsmouth in the 79, spent 30 years there. Went up through the ranks, just about every position possible, and I uh, ended my career as chief of police in 2009, and I was chief for about seven years. I left Portsmouth on a Friday and walked in town hall in Rye on a Monday, and I was there for 10 years as their town administrator. I have a master's in public administration, a bachelor's in uh, business, been to a number of law enforcement command schools. Hmm. So. so 10 years in Portsmouth? Uh, 30, uh, 7 years as chief. Okay. 10 sorry. years in Rye. 10 years in Rye. In Rye. In Rye. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. You followed a really good time. I did. Yeah, I, I followed a really good time administrator. Okay. <laughs> um, what's your number? Yeah. I had to clean up a number of messes, but... Can you tell us a little bit about um, the organization of RI, the, depart the departments, um, the staff, how big the staff is? Sure, I mean, RI has a full time fire department, a full time uh, police department. Uh, we have a great, had a great rec program. Um, the Board of Selectmen had an assistant uh, that helped me out. Uh, we had a finance director assessing works office, uh, two building inspectors. Did you have fully staff? Uh, DPW, yeah, we're fully staff, yeah. <laughs> 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 Lorraine is appreciating that comment. Um, as fully staffed as you can ever be, I guess. You know. um, so you said you had a finance director? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, an administrative assistant as mm -hmm. well? 
So you're used to dealing with like any type of welfare cases, stuff like that? I did not do welfare, no. Okay. So we contracted out the welfare to the city of Boston. Okay. And then dealings, a lot of dealings with the New Hampshire on, on those schools this session? In HMA? Yeah, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I was a tough time with that. So we dealt with NHMA and also with Primex as well. Perfect. Have you looked at our town at all? I mean, in just uh, just on your website. So. And you realize our size and yeah. how small oh, yeah. we are. And yeah. did I we're understaffed. <laughs> um, did I send the position description? I don't think you did. And oh. you know, one of my questions, is, you know, for, for you folks is, you know, we don't come in and uh, the people we provide on an interim basis. You know, it's not like we're balancing the checkbook. So, you know, uh, finances is not what we do. We have finance people, but they don't do management. Okay. So, you know, we do the management piece of, of town administration. So that's, you know, interaction with uh, the state, federal authorities on grants and stuff like that. It's interaction with the board of selectmen, with your department managers, um, uh, with the board of selectmen, the communications back and forth. Uh, dealing with you know whatever lawsuits there are, you're coming into a time of year now um, where you've got to build budgets, you've got to um, uh, write more articles and, and all that stuff. That's what we do. Yeah. And I say we personnel issues. Okay. I'm, I'm president of the company, but I'm also uh, as a former town administrator and police chief. I've also done a couple of these interim assignments myself, mm -hmm. um, and so I understand that role pretty well. So you'd be capable of writing the warrants? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so, right, exactly. That's one of the things we're up against right now is the budget. Um, we're, we're working with the budget committee actively um, this month and into next month to finalize the budget. Um, we have met with um, the department heads, and but we're still refining it. Um, so definitely, um, any assistance um, would be valuable there. How about uh, refining the job description? We really got to have. Good job description. Right. So, so one of the things that when Mike's an employee of MRI, right? So when you hire one of our people, you have hired MRI. Right. So we have people that all they do is write job descriptions. Right. So for for us to alter your job description is is nothing. It's you know we do that all the time. That that's not an issue. If you're going to do a recruitment, uh, you're going to want to update your job description anyway, so that you've got a a, a current JD out there. Uh, we can definitely make recommendations on that. But, so things like that are not an issue. If Mike runs into something that he's not familiar with, um, you know, whether it's a, a warrant article question, it's a, a finance or a budget question, you know, we have we have finance people. We have you know, we just have teams like people that do this. Thing. Yeah, thank you. So you know, it's the team that you kind of get, and Mike is the face of that team and does 99% of the work in Rollinsburg. But that's. That's kind of what you get with us. You also have to close out of this year's budget. You put it on a calendar year, right? Right. So you need to keep, this is the time of year that you really need to keep tabs on that. You're kind of kind of overspend, but that you spend the money that you need to spend so that you'll carry it over into next year. You know, one of the things we're struggling with, at least I'm struggling with, is is this a full-time job or is this like a 24-hour job? So an assessment of that. Right. We'd be looking for an assessment. We'd be looking for some help on that. So our, our interims are almost never full time. There are there are a few that we do that are full time. Uh, most of our interims run uh, two or three days a week because there are certain things that you know we don't get involved in uh, some of the drama that may help in other, uh, happen in other places that tend to take time. Uh, we don't do that. We come in, we do the job, we go home. Uh, and actually, Mike is pretty, we're both pretty experienced in Rye. I was the full time town administrator after being the police chief. And after uh, doing the job for three years, I just felt like it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a full time job. And it always had been, yeah. for as long as anybody could remember. Um, so uh, when I left, uh, they actually hired MRI to go in and provide an interim. And that was about three days a week, I think he was there. But my recommendation to the town was that they, they try. Do it on a part time basis, and that's when they hired Mike. Um, so, Mike did it part time for 10 years. Now, Ryan's a community of uh, 5,600 or so, and you can understand what the population would be in the summer. Um, the other advantage to perhaps doing it uh, part time 
is that uh, you're not paying NHRS retirement costs. Um, and you may attract people that um, it would be to their advantage to not be in the retirement system. You, the, the, the TA position can always be exempt from the entry retirement system. I don't know if it was or it wasn't uh, previously. But by a simple vote of the board of selectmen, it can be, it's the one position that can be exempt in a town or city. So uh, that, that could go either way. But you might have people that are out there that are experienced um, that would be willing to do the job, but they don't want to work full time anymore. And, you know, that's why... You know, that, that's what I was going to ask. Are there people that are looking for part-time work? We see the same thing for, for uh, police chief recruitments as well. Um, but there are people out there that, you know, they've done the, the 40, 50, 60 hours a week for 15, 20 years. And now it's like they still want to, to do their craft. You know, they, they still have plenty to give, but they just don't want to commit that kind of time to it. And if, if a community doesn't need it, then you find yourself kind of looking for stuff to do. Uh, you know, that was part of the reason that I went to do it. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was I, I would say, it could be a 40 hour a week job, but, you know, if you were very efficient at it, I just didn't think it had to be. Yeah. I, I think we were looking at maybe, uh, again, this is me speaking, I was, I was thinking maybe we give more work to our bookkeeper <clears throat> and, and really uh, straighten out what we're going to do as far as the town administrator. What are the responsibilities of the town administrator and the bookkeeper mm -hmm. and, you know, the clerk? And maybe redefine that a little bit. So, so he oh. is an, an administrative assistant as well. So. I'm, I'm going to button for a little bit. So I agree, first of all, two or three days a week is, I think, what we're talking about anyway for intern. Right. Um, I'm very interested on what your assessment would be about a part-time two to three days a week town administrator. Um, I'm also curious about the amount of time that the town administrator would need to spend on certain issues like nitrogen permits, stormwater. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with what Lawrence was going through right now. Has a part of the Great Bay. No. And so there's quite the a bit of four. Quite a, huh? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yeah, the Yannis four. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I'm curious what if you can just give me a few examples of where you brought state and federal grants into the town of Rye. Well, Rye, in 2009, when I went there, Rye, we put in for them, we received the most payroll money than any other city or town in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we put in a geothermal <coughs> heating cooling system in town hall, we put in a new boiler in the elementary school, uh, we did energy upgrades to the library. Um, and then we just, you know, a lot of just smaller grants that we wrote and that we received help and training and personnel issues. Um, we got those emergency that. management grants that, that we received. You, you got to leverage. Um, we all leverage out there, so you have to know where to work, you have to know how to, work, how to apply for it. And uh, that's something that certainly Mike has the experience in. And again, we've got a team behind him uh, that, that's able to, to help out. You know, Mike would be very good at being able to determine mm -hmm. uh, what you really needed, mm -hmm. whether full time or part time. And as I understand it, uh, your former administrator was the finance director at some point, right? No, I don't think. I, she I thought she had a heavy finance responsibility initially. She, she was treasurer. Yeah. She was, was she on the treasurer? Um, no, no, she was part time treasurer. Treasurer was elected. And then. Um, she did do the finances, but I don't know that she officially had the title of finance so, director. My, my point is, though, when somebody gets hired at this position, uh, let's say you go with primarily finance, mm -hmm. and then they become the town administrator, very often some of those finance things move with that person. They don't necessarily need to be there or, or belong there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, it, you know, the best person to do the finance thing is somebody that specializes in finance. Well, we do have a bookkeeper, and he does all of the payroll, the bills, everything. Um, and he does help with the budget, um, with the, the portal um, as well. So I think he really kind of covers that, for the most part, mm -hmm. with some oversight from the town administrator. And that, that's all it really should be yeah. from the town administrator, as far as I'm concerned, with the oversight. And if you said that, you know, oh, we're not a finance person, I think you and I determined that initially in our phone call, because we wouldn't be sitting here talking about that, because we just, we have finance people, we have managers. Uh, it's very rare to find a good manager that also does finance. Um, so she did manage, like, the budget worksheets and revenue worksheets, making sure that they were updated, and, and so now I'm, I'm actually doing that. Um, 
not that I want to do it in the long term, um, so we would have to figure out probably that part of it. Um, but that kind of comes along with preparing the budget. So I think you know quarterlies are another thing that she would take care of in terms of revenue. Um, so she did do some finance, but Chuck does quite a bit as well. Okay. Have you set the tax rate yet? Uh, we did send the form in um, yeah. so the end of September. That's in process. Yeah, yeah I should. Yeah. Be. Mm -hmm. It was submitted in October, October or maybe towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have an appointment. That's sort of the last piece of the puzzle, is what you can say as well. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So how big is your, how big your firm, roughly people-wise? Really. So I think that there's probably 16 or 18 full-time now. Okay. And there's uh, probably about 40 part-time people. Um, everybody's an employee. They may be a part-time or full-time employee. And I, I'd like to say that on any given day, there are probably about 30 people out doing the work of MRI. Okay. We've done projects from Georgia to the Canadian border and as far west as Ohio. Uh, for recruitments, we do probably about 30 recruitments a year. Everything DPW director, finance director, school business administrators, you know, mostly town administrators, town managers, city managers, police chiefs and fire chiefs. But we do them, you know, I mean, right now I have finance directors, I have town managers, city managers, uh, DPW director, you know, a few of everything. Um, and then we have, uh, so right now I think we have, we're serving as interim police chiefs in uh, three communities off the top of my head, and we're serving as interim town managers or interim town administrators in probably two other communities right now. So those are always ongoing, it's just a matter of flux. We're kind of like 911. People need us, you know. They come to us. You know, they call us, and, and we find the right, the right person that we have to do that particular job. Whether it's finance, we also do assessing. So we do assessing in probably twenty some odd communities in the state of New Hampshire, Maine. We function as their assessors. So we have uh, probably ten full time people just assigned to that. So I'm sorry, I was going to ask one more question and then I'll, I'll be done. So when a contract comes up, say, I'm just curious for um, people that do our assessment now. Uh, yeah, I was going to say up to it. That's something that I guess we may be interested in too, just for cost analysis to see the difference in cost. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, very often we respond to an RFP or, or uh, somebody giving you just contacts and say, here's what, you know, here's what we have for parcels and here's. Uh, whatnot. We'll put together a proposal. Yeah. Um, there, there been, I mean, I can think of one case where I was actually the acting town administrator and had to write the uh, the RFP, but then I had to completely that the the proposals didn't come to me. They went directly to the board of selectmen, so I could I could have nothing to do with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, that's a lot of money assessing contracts. I'm sure. It so is. it's 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 pretty good idea to take a look at that okay. on a fairly regular basis. Avatar is a really good company. Yep, I'm, uh, I'm just curious yeah, about it. Just a matter of cost. Okay, I'm sorry, I can go. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, um, Mike, can you tell me a little bit about your management style, like how you interact with the public heads and select board, or how you like to operate? Yeah, purely corroborative. I like to work with people, I like to work as a, as a team. So, you know, it's not me or the highway type style. Uh, I like to listen to what people have for ideas, and, you know, I like to really just function as a resource. Yeah. So did um, in in Rye, did you meet with them like periodically or weekly? Yeah, we well, we had um, I met with them almost daily um, because just with the, the very nature of town hall. So the police chief or the fire chief stopped in every day. I would you know the finance person was right outside my office, uh, and then we had monthly staff meetings, and then we would be as a team as needed when we worked on projects. So, okay. and I like to, to bring as many people in as week as I could. Um, Okay. To make sure that you know the department's coordinated and you know they, they know what needs to be done and, and everybody's cooperating and we're providing the best service possible for the, for the public. What about um, communications with the select board? How frequent do you feel like you need to um, interact with us? In Rye, mostly the, the way their practice was set and the policy, I mostly would deal with the chairperson. And the chairperson would say, I need you to call Selectman Jones or Selectman Smith, and that's what I would do. Okay. And I would work with the select panel with the chairperson and setting the agenda and making sure all the agenda items were taken care of and whatever else. Okay, so 
So you, that was something that was on your responsibility, was yeah. managing me there? Yeah. So did you have an HR person, or did you have to deal with personnel issues directly? No, I dealt with a lot of personnel issues. So, okay. you know, I mean, I had my finance director served kind of as the HR person in terms of making sure people were enrolled for their health care and dental and retirement and that sort of stuff. But um, a lot of the personnel issues went through my office. Okay. So we don't have a, a welfare director. And we have pretty low welfare here. Um, I, I don't even think we spend a budget most of the time, and it's like $25,000, I think. Um, so, which is a, a good thing. However, the bookkeeper, um, or the administrative assistant, his name's Chuck, um, was kind of owned that together with the last town administrator. Um, what would be your position, like, what would be your involvement in that? Do you want to be involved? Do you not want to be involved? Um, because we have to figure out some ownership around that. Um, certainly, an advisory role, which is kind of how I did it in Rye. So like it's a we contracted our welfare for the city of Portsmouth. But their welfare director would call me and say, hey, we get this family out there that, you know, I'm looking to do this or that. And, you know, what do you think? And I would say, yeah, let's do that. Or if we can do this, let's do this instead. Um, but in terms of getting down into the minutiae and the, you know. Interviewing people, yeah, no. Yeah. In, in part of it is you need to know what the resources are in any given community. Right. So in, in Rye, I was actually going to transition that so on the if we had a, a welfare administrator, but it just didn't make sense for us to be paying a, a welfare administrator. Uh, and, and a lot of these people were bouncing between the various, the city and the town and back and forth. So to have it coordinated, and it was much less expensive for us to just pay Portsmouth, they have a full-time staff of several there uh, that, that do that, and they do the resources in the area. Right. Uh, so it just made more sense for us to do it that way. Uh, There's definitely some training behind it, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think, so <coughs> our budget is $22,501, and last year we spent sixteen eight ninety five. So the, the numbers are pretty low. Um, and, and so Chuck, I don't think Chuck necessarily was doing that. Um, I think it was just coverage. So if he was on vacation, then um, the town administrator would um, manage that. Um, this week, last week he was on vacation, I, I did that. <laughs> Unfortunately, not one single phone call, so um, that was good. Uh, but I think probably just making sure we have an understanding about um, how that will function um, with a temporary town administrator. And I agree, oversight's probably exactly what we need. Okay. I agree with that. Do you have a lot of inter interaction with the town clerk and the tax collector or not so much because they were pretty much their own? Well, they were their own entity, but I did have a fair amount of interaction with them. Yeah. Again, dealing with personnel issues or helping them get set up for the election or whatever else. So. Right. Um, so, um, Alan, for, for you, what is the market like for part-time people right now? Is it a soft market? Or? I think, I, you know, we haven't done a part time one for, for a little while. There were a couple that we had posted uh, that could go either way. Okay. So we actually wrote in the ad that this could be uh, potentially part time or full time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that some of that depends on um, what each individual candidate kind of brings to the game, mm -hmm. if you will. So that's a, that's a pretty good way to advertise for it. Because um, if you go strictly part time, you may lose some people that might be a really good fit and need full time employment. So I, I recommend that you be flexible on that. The pools right now are incredibly slim. Mm -hmm. uh, people have fled local government management. Part of it is generational, I think. Um, you know, I, I went to MRI in 2008, and when we were doing a town manager recruitment, we could typically expect about 100 candidates. We're lucky now if we get 20. Uh, and that's all, even, I was going to say all the same advertising, but it's even more advertising than, than we used to do for these positions. Um, you know, which is the Deering, another small community. Uh, I guess that's a little northwest of uh, Manchester. Um, I, I want to say we have fewer than 10 uh, applicants. You know, we just did Berwick, not a large field there. I want to say there were mid-20s maybe. Um, and I 
case, in the Berwick case, were they mostly Maine residents or were they um, just regional? Both. Okay. Yeah, and, and we always get people that uh, will apply from what we call it LA. Uh, you know, it could be Maryland, Pennsylvania, California, it doesn't matter. Uh, but we always, we always know that there's going to be <coughs> uh, transition issues potentially. So we carry them through. We don't exclude somebody from a process until we know that they're not the right fit. Because it, it doesn't, you know, it's just a matter of some extra time that you have to do maybe to the phone interview to weed these people out. But um, there are legitimate reasons why people would want to move from, um, you know, maybe they grew up here or they have family here and they want to move back. They went away for, for college and they, they established themselves there and now it's time to come back again. We see that a lot. But um, the, the problem is, <coughs> in state, is that it, it becomes very competitive for the people that are, that are available and it becomes all about salary. So I don't know what you're offering. I have, I have provided you, I think, with a, a few numbers. But unless you're offering more than what they're making where they are, then we have no reason to move at all. So then you're getting people that are transitioning into the job from private sector or from college, um, or you're getting people from away that want to be here for a particular reason. That's pretty much what it comes down to. So tell us a little bit about your services, um, of, of the recruiting services part of it. So what I recommend to the smaller communities now is that we do what we call an assistance package. So we do, we do dozens of these that have a full comprehensive recruitment. Um, but th that's a lot of money. So for these assistance packages, we do them now for police chiefs, fire chiefs, virtually any position. And it's where we, do, we can do all those same things we would do for a comprehensive package. There's no guarantee when we, when we get the, the comprehensive package that there's a one-year guarantee of it. There's no guarantee. Um, but we can do all those same elements. Uh, any recruitment I do, I like to write the ad, and, and we place the ads. Um, we review the resumes. We like to send out essays, particularly for a town administrator or a town manager recruitment. And those essays would be focused on some things that were special to your community. Because mm -hmm. aside from wanting to know how they would answer the questions, it would generally relate to their experience. We want to make sure that they can communicate in a written manner. And so many people can't nowadays. Um, and then we would do some uh, preliminary uh, checks on the people. Some of them, it's likely that we may know, either good or bad, from other places or other recruitments. Um, then we do phone interviews. So at this point, on a this size, we're talking about maybe a half dozen phone interviews. I remember we used to do you know, 12 or 15, uh, just to get the field narrowed. And then we would present you with the top, um, you know, whether it's three candidates, whether it's five candidates. I can think of one I did for public works director where we only had one really good candidate we liked. And I told that board, I said, I think this is the perfect person, and I think you ought to interview people only, even though it's only one candidate, I think you ought to interview that person, and they love him. And he's been there three, four years there. So it's hard to predict what the end game will look like, but that's typically how we do the vetting process. So is the cost of this equivalent to like one year's salary or less? So? Oh, no, no, no. To do, to do the assistance package that we're talking about, we're talking about like $3,500. <coughs> That's just the recruiting services. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I usually say around 3500 certainly less than 5000 There's no way that we could do a comprehensive package that includes the guarantee and all the rest of that stuff um, for, uh, you know, less than probably $8,500. How does the comprehensive package, other than the guarantee, um, differ from the assistance package? Well, it includes the background. Okay. Uh, we typically do an ideal candidate profile and challenge statement. Um, that there is very often a lot of community engagement. So when we're doing, um, you know, like the Concord Mass, Lexington Mass, uh, Lebanon, New Hampshire, when we're doing places like that, there's a lot of uh, community involvement, which uh, I don't really think is necessary in most recruitments. Some communities feel that they, they need that. Um, at the end of the day, it's still going to be um, a couple of us in MRI that are making the decisions as to, to who to move forward, who's qualified mm -hmm. uh, to do the job. And it's up to the community in the end to pick those people that are the best fit out of the qualified people to, to get moved forward. Okay. And that includes, the comprehensive package includes a background. Um, you know, some communities under the assistance package, they say, well, they're not going to do a background. 
as far as I'm concerned, it's the most important part of the selection process. Mm -hmm. Or they say, we're going to have the police department do it, or whatever. So a background, it typically costs $1,500. Okay. Okay. Any other so what would you need from us to um, start recruiting? You need the existing job description, you would, I take it, you put together something from that? Yeah, the, the very first thing I would do would be a, a draft an ad for you folks to, to review. And I would, I would need some, I would have some questions. I need to know uh, what's the top of the salary range, what's your uh, town budget, how many full-time and part-time employees are there. Because those are things that if somebody's sitting back looking for a job, or they, they think, oh, Rollins 50, that sounds like a, a pretty neat place to work. Those are the things they'd want to, they'd want to know before they decide whether they were the right fit. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would need that, then I would craft the ad. Uh, once you approved it, we would place the ad. And at the same time, we'd just be looking at your job description to see what that needed for updates. Yep. Um, I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, in this case, I probably wouldn't. Uh, we would include enough in the ad. You know, there's so much, we would also take, so we create a web page just for your recruitment. So on that web page would be, uh, I'd probably ask, would you move your budget over to it, or at least create a link to your budget, we would create a link to your website, we would look at other potential links that we might want to have, we'd post your job description there, and the full ad would be posted there, because in some of the venues we, we post a shortened ad because you pay by the word. So all of those things direct them to the recruitment web page that we've set up for you folks. And then there, a candidate will know, they'll be able to see the full ad, they'll be able to see the JD, they'll see these links to, you know, whatever we put there uh, to your community, and that's when they can really make a decision whether they might be a good fit. And then they submit. Uh, we build a, uh, a spreadsheet uh, with all the candidates in them. We have a scoring system that we use. Two of us would typically score the candidates. If Mike was here, uh, you know, I have Mike as one of the scorers because he would know the community, so it would be Mike and I in that case. Uh, then we just move through the process. But to get started, that, that's all we need. It's just a, a couple of facts that would go into the ad, and I want to get the JV done as quickly as possible so that that can be placed. So that when they see the ad, they can go to that. They can go to the web page and see the, uh, see the JV. Yeah, so does it make sense? I mean, what's, I, we talk about crafting a job description, but part of what we are hoping to do is it's been an assessment of the needs for the position. So does it make sense to wait a couple of weeks to do that? Or is it pretty standard, um, a town administrator's position, pretty standard enough that we already know what should be on that job description? It's pretty standard. Uh, and you know we have dozens of them at our fingertips from, from other places where, where we've done uh, classification studies. So that, that's not difficult at all, and the, the duties are the same whether you're full-time or part-time. Um, it's just maybe, maybe less of them, a few of them. And then if somebody comes and they have, let's just say that a candidate has a great IT background, well maybe that, maybe you can leverage that IT background to fill a void that you have. Or they have a, some other, some other uh, specialization in something that's of use to the town, then, you know, they can they can kind of have that added to their job description as well. So it doesn't have to be an all-encompassing job description because there's always that and other other uh, essential functions as determined by the board of selectmen. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. I, I think it's kind of critical to get the ads started as soon as you can. We like the ad, we like the ads to run 30 days, uh, a full 30-day runtime, um, and then then it takes. Uh, about two weeks to get the resumes turn, uh, <coughs> essays turned around. So once we made a cut, we sent out the essays. Uh, and, and if Mike was here, he would be determining what would be good essays uh, to ask based on input from these folks and problems that he's seeing. Um, get those essays out. We allow about 10 days for them to return those. Then we score those. And then we do our phone reviews. I think just the whole process could, be, could go out to 90 days or better, though, right? Right. I would say that in this type of a process, we would probably have candidates before you in that 60-day period or so. And then it's a matter of you folks uh, doing your, your interviews, which we can facilitate, uh, making a decision. And then if, if we're going to do a background, and you, I usually tell people it takes two weeks to do that, we do a comprehensive background with these people. Uh, and at the same time we're doing the background, uh, you should be focusing on uh, negotiations with them for 
you know, salary benefits, work hours, all that stuff. And so after about that two week period from the time you've made the decision, we should have the background on it, and we should know what the terms of employment are. And that's a matter of, if we get the thumbs up from the background, you're all able to sign if you're in agreement on terms of employment. So this is probably going to go four months, right? <laughs> well, then you I got mean, the. It depends on, on you know if it was a if it was somebody local and they were ready to transition well, yeah, in right away. You're, you're right. That's but if it's somebody from away, you got to build in almost thirty days for that for them to give give notice and. Are we obligated to move them? <clears throat> no, no. So you know, as I learned a long time ago from a good um, uh, legal counsel for a town, was that it's all just money. So, you know, sometimes if somebody's going to move, if there's going to be a relocation, I don't know that would be the case because I'm not sure that you're going to be offering enough money that would really require a relocation unless they wanted to come this way anyways. Yeah. But, you know, you can offer, you can say $2,500 or $3,500 for, you know, to help you relocate. That's a one-time, right. it's a one-time payment to help seal the deal as opposed to increasing salary by, you know, annual one. Um, so it's, it's kind of a little early to talk about relocation. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, we've had some good luck with people transitioning out of the military because you have a lot of people leaving the military too. And some of these people were running bases that had um, uh, civilian populations and civilian services. And these are people that can move anywhere they want because they're coming out of whatever their current assignment is. So we've had really good luck with some of those folks too. And it's like they'd like to come to New Hampshire and. They're going to move anyway, so you know there's no relocation. So in, in, if we put a salary in there, and you're saying the higher it is for a full-time position, and we're leaning towards a part-time position, are we setting ourselves up that they're thinking like ninety thousand dollars? They think we would just we're going to pay them thirty thousand. You know? No, we we would like the ad to to recognize that fact that it's going to be commensurate with not only qualifications but with the final description. Uh, of the of the job, and it's our job when we do these phone interviews to make sure that everybody's expectations are correct. Um, you know, we could we could be posting uh, a position for one hundred thirty five thousand, and we'll be on the phone, and we'll find out that they're making you know one hundred fifty thousand where they are, and we'll say, well, you read the ad, right? It says you know one hundred twenty five thousand. Well, yeah, but I know that there's always you know there's always room to push that. And we say, no, there isn't always room to push that. You know, that 125 is the top of the scale and it's not going to be any higher. And then we're able to just drop down right from the process because it's just not going to work. Um, and I think people know that that's how, how we do it. Um, so we, we don't get a lot of that anymore. But we want to create the right expectation. So I, I think you have to trust me. And you'd, you'd see the final um, mm -hmm. wording anyways. But that we would craft that in such a way that it leaves it open to be part-time, full-time, and the pay would be commensurate with the hours. So this is my I totally hypothetical right now. Um, hypothetical is, Mike's, we decide, we hire you, say, just two days a week for a couple months. Um, during the first month or two, I mean, we're, we're still processing, we're still looking for a full-time mm -hmm. or part-time town administrator. That's where I would would like to see MRI's input yeah. as we craft a job. Right. Is it a is it a job that can be done very efficiently in three days? Right. Um, and you know, when us being board members, we need to do certain other things right. on certain boards that maybe town administrator did a lot of before. That you know, finance was one that she did a lot of that maybe shouldn't have been right. so much time consuming. So that's the way I would like to hypothetically right now to be able to get a decision chip, something like that. Yeah, we'd like you to and then, do that. then the ball's rolling twice. First, we're covering, we're covering what we have right now, and then we're crafting a way to get a person in here. And I don't want to speak right now because it's very possible to be full time. But my vision is more like a three day, three days a week type position. We actually, and a theory, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Right, yeah. My thought was, I'd rather see a person in a position at three days a week that can do a really good, outstanding job. And someone's in it for five days a week and doesn't do as good a job as someone does it for three, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, so just as we were uh, talking here, uh, you know, one way to kind of explain what we're trying to do in the, in the, uh, the posting is even just some wording like part time candidates considered. 
Uh, so that kind of opens that door to people. Yep. Um, and, and just so that you know, some of these are long-term assignments that we do. For example, we were in the city of Berlin four days a week for 11 years. Uh, we had the same person assigned there for 11 years, and he was doing it for four days a week. Uh, I've had uh, the same person in um, Enfield now since I think last December, and he's three days a week. Okay. Um, so even places that have been full time and everybody would think it should be full time, you know, uh, it's not necessarily the case. But certainly Mike would be able to determine. And, you know, the right leader manager is able to. Um, use their resources to delegate to maybe lower paid positions. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that's where, you know, the town can see some, some savings. Okay. Okay. That's, what we, that's what we're really hopeful of, you know, that we can move some things around. Yeah, it's just really a, mat a matter of leadership and management, you know. So certainly guys like us learned that from our police group because we didn't, you know, we didn't do it all. We had captains and lieutenants and sergeants and and you delegate it to people that, that you trust and you train them to do the work that needed to be done. Um, and they were all at lesser pay grades than certainly the chief. And, and I think that that's what you try to do in a community like that. So you got, I know your background was in police. Your background was also in police yeah, too. 30 years, 30 years. 26. We've got more police here than we do other people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of um, chief, uh, a lot of managers in the state that made the transition. But, you know, I was the town administrator of Ryan before Mike. So I was the, the, the chief, and I was the chief and town administrator, and I was just the administrator, and, and uh, what that was. Huh. Okay. Well, I think one of the other things that we have to consider is that the, the board start to take back a little bit of responsibility as well, mm -hmm. um, instead of just dumping everything onto the town administrator. Yes. Um, because before we had a town administrator, we only had a town administrator for I think about three, four years. Um, the select board was pretty active. Um, it, they were retired mostly, um, but I think even if you had a part-time town administrator and you had a fairly active select board, you could make it work. Yes, you know. agreed. It's got to be the right person. It's got to be the right person, yeah. One of the things they did in Rye, and I, Alan probably did this, I'm not sure, but and I don't know what the bench is like here at Town Hall, but they created an assistant town administrator, so the finance person was an assistant town administrator, so there was always a town administrator there Monday through Friday mm -hmm. during business days, and in the end, when I left, that person transitioned <coughs> to becoming the, the mm -hmm. town administrator. Mm -hmm. So, so our, our bookkeeper, or well, our home bookkeeper, he's the bookkeeper, but he's the administrative assistant as well. He is 32 pounds a week right now. 31 and five. Yeah, um, so, and he, he does a lot of work, so I wonder if that might be kind of a nice flow together. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, he, I think he does quite a bit of, um, except for some of the major things like permitting and um, grants and that sort of thing, but the day to day operations, um, I think he was pretty involved with yeah, the Caroline. There would be a lot of communication between mm -hmm. Chuck and. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I'm hogging up all the questions, nope, but I'll just ask two more. No, okay, then. <laughs> no, we're done. <laughs> let me, let me ask you. What do you <laughs> My what questions do you, are done. My I'm calling, son. What do you charge for Mike? <laughs> we, we, uh, for you folks, it would be $80 an hour. So, Mike, are you, are you looking for three days a week? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And what, I, what would your schedule be like? I was thinking more like two days a week. Yeah. What if you think? Okay. Nope. You, you, He'd be here three days, so I was thinking two days a week. I don't know. What if yeah, right. we started out at two and right. yeah, see then, if we need three? So then, would you be able to do three if you had to? Yes, yeah. So typically, a contract would say that you'd be expected to be on site uh, you know, two days a week. Um, and it, but it's subject to the needs of the community. So, you know, so a lot of people, and, and you know, be the same for Mike, might be two days, one week, or three weeks in a row, and then, then something requires a, a third day because of some stuff that's going on. It's lawsuits or it's, um, you know, election or whatever. So, I mean, that's totally flexible for us. That can be flexible. Yeah, we're just providing a service, yep. and you determine how much service you need. The contract also says that you can end it at any time. Okay. There's just no... We just see ourselves as providing a service to communities, um, and, and it's just totally, what you could say, you know, three weeks after he starts, you know what, uh, I think we've got this, and, and we just don't need it anymore, it's not happening, but 
That's fine. One of the things that made it difficult to juggle with the hours and ride, and I, and I did it, and having an assistant was very helpful, was going to meetings. So I don't know what is required of your town administrator in terms of attending various meetings, because they, they eat up a lot of time. So I think um, Caroline did go to a lot of meetings, but I don't know necessarily that's a requirement. Um, because we, um, each of us is an ex officio on the boards. Right, yeah. um, so it did not See, I only went to select meetings. Yeah, see so that, that? Well, that's what I can see, too. I, I don't take this the wrong way, but I really don't see us bringing someone in and paying an $80,000 for the whole game, whether it's planning or, you know. Yeah, it could be special meetings, but. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I'm going across. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not typical. I think, you know, in, in the three assignments I've done, it's just, I, I would only go to town after the slip for They can have a slip for member for $2 an hour. Yeah. 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 People don't understand the amount of time for the right. um, okay. um, And so I think my last question is, so the uh, assistance package, um, is there a timeline on that? So what if after 30, uh, 90 days, we still haven't found any? How does that work? We just keep going. Okay. Yeah. So Many of the, uh, we, we got a pretty good sense of fairly early on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in some cases we'd have to repost or in other places it's just a matter of going in and changing the deadline in the, uh, from the advertising venue. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't happen often. It doesn't. Um, and I'll be honest, in Enfield, we're on our third go round. Okay. <clears throat> That's a comprehensive. Package and although it's not required that we do it by contract, I just mm -hmm. felt like uh, we're just going to keep doing this under I mean, the same terms of the contract until it's done. Uh, only that, you know, we took the summer off because it's a really hard time to get people to pay attention during the summer. So that's uh, that deadline was just uh, met, I think, uh, Friday on that one. But that's really unusual. And part of that's because of location. This is really, I'm pretty sure, really the last question. What other tools do you use <clears throat> for recruiting? Um, do you use like um, online, like LinkedIn tools like that? Or we don't. We, we've experimented with LinkedIn and Indeed, mm -hmm. and um, the, the you know, candidates that we get. Yeah. yeah, I refer to them a lot of junk. Alphabet soup. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. And it's it's done. You know, this computer generated responses that we get, and because somebody said they want to be a manager, well, because we posted a manager position. And they managed a, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, some thing that's totally unrelated. It matches them and sends it to us. But um, some of those places, I want to say it's Indeed, very often pirates are in. I don't know how they do it. It ends up on Indeed, and somehow the ad actually gets changed. And it, it, we end up being responsible for it. And the client will call and say, we saw this on Indeed. This isn't at all what the ad is supposed to be. And we say, we're not responsible for it. We... They took our ad and changed it. So we then we have to try to get a hold of something we need. So we go with, we like to do um, uh, the local press. So in this case, I would say you might want to do a, a package with Fosters mm -hmm. and with the union leader, because the union leader will get the, the greatest amount. And <coughs> is that people, something you do, or is that something we would do? No, we do. Okay. We, we would post them. Um, and most of those have a package where you can run it like one day, like in the union leader. Uh, you can get it to run on, I think it's one Sunday, but then you get a 30-day run of, you know, uh, online. That's really what we're looking for is the online. You just have to buy the, the Sunday edition with it. Uh, there's that. Uh, it would be NHMA, Vermont League of Cities and Towns, or Rhode Island, the local trust, Maine Municipal, Mass Municipal <coughs> Association. Those are all free or very cheap. So you use all of those mm -hmm. um, sites? Yes. Paul, I think you looked at posting something to class that on NHMA. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and then each, each of the New England states has a comparable to that, so we have relationships with all of them, and we would do it in all of those places. And then we would do uh, uh, ICMA, because that's where you get kind of that uh, broad nationwide response. Um, so with, with the local advertisements, that being the local press, the, the Fosters in, or the Union Leader, you're going to get people that maybe are in the region but aren't really looking for a job and maybe right. don't have town manager or town administrator experience, but they like they see it and it's like, yeah, you maybe I'll apply for that. You never know if somebody could be could have some relatable skills. But then with the ICMA 
and, and AHMA and MMA, you'll get the professionals that might be looking. You could have somebody looking to move up from a number two position to a number one position, somebody looking to retire or slow down a little bit. Um, you know, a whole bunch of different things. But these are people that are, that are. What do you think the most important skills are for this job? It's just people skills. It's just everything we do is dealing with people. Good, bad, and different. And I, I honestly think that's why, in my experience, police chiefs have made, I can name a bunch of them around the state, end up making some half decent managers and administrators because that's all we do as police officers is deal with people. Joe's smiling back there. <laughs> so Joe, do you want to sign up? I'm pretty much going to lose too, but I'm fine. You brought up military. Do you guys have any like networking through the military or anything like that? Any we do. Networking? As a matter of fact, uh, at the uh, NHMA conference, which is coming up in November, I'll be uh, uh, joining a panel of two others just to talk about recruiting veterans. That I was actually signed out by uh, uh, the person that's doing it just for that purpose. Because he had been involved in one of my recruitments as he, as he transitioned out of the uh, military. He was a lieutenant colonel. He was in Germany when we interviewed him. And the town I was, I was hired by couldn't see the, the connection, the community panel that did the final interviews, so they took a pass. However, he's a very successful county administrator now in New Hampshire. Um, there was one I did, uh, I won't name the town in Massachusetts, where a pretty large community and we had narrowed it down to like 12 people and then it went the way the contract was with them. They had a, a selection committee that wanted to see those 12 people. And they rated them. And I went down to that meeting that night and they had ranked everybody. They had ranked all the candidates. We were looking for six to go forward to interview with this committee. And uh, there was somebody that I liked that was transitioning out of the military. And uh, they no, nobody wanted to talk to him. Nobody wanted to interview him. And I said, well, then I'm either going to use my veto authority and, and be only yours and put this person in, or we're going to add another person. And um, so I convinced them. Uh, they did the interviews, then he was moved, he came out number one out of their interviews. He went to the board of selectmen, he was number one with them when he got hired. Um, but you just have to understand, and it's part of our job to, to help people understand their relatable skills. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Mike, what's your uh, timeline if we wanted to do this? I. I'm available now, so I have a week's vacation in early November to go see family out on the West Coast, and other than that. So, for, and just so you understand, for, for us, Mike's been with us for, I don't know, uh, since I was a chief, 2008. Yeah, so he goes from assignment to assignment for us. So he does internal investigations, he does recruitments, he does organizational studies. Last week he went down to an assessment center for police chief down in Mass. So, you know, uh, if he takes, you know, if he accepts this assignment and you, and you wanted him, then I would just lay off of some of the other things on him and transition that to some of our other people. We just make it all work all around. Um, so, assuming if we went forward, um, would you want to have an introductory meeting with each of the department heads? Yes, or? I would, yeah. Um, I would do a department head meeting or meet with them individually. Okay. I'd like to talk to each of you individually as well sure. um, and get a sense of what you your expectations are. Mm -hmm. um, see if there are any outstanding personnel issues, any outstanding projects. Um, we have a transition document that okay. isn't very old. Um, it's probably only a couple months old now. I'd love to get my hands on now. that, yeah. So. Okay. <coughs> personnel manual, I don't know uh, if there are any union contracts that I need to look at, any uh, selections, policies, or procedures, purchasing policies. Um, yep, we have some of that. There's no union contract, though. We are not. Okay. Tom Attorney, do you have somebody on speed dial that you use? Okay. We do. Any restrictions placed on the town administrator and calling that person? No, we use the NHMA as much as okay. we can. Yeah, we did in Rye too. Yeah. Keep the cost down. Who is Tom Tom? Uh, Steve Roberts? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, Steve Roberts. Okay, yeah, Judge Roberts. Yeah. Okay. You can still see that right? It's, it's his firm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not Steve himself because he yeah. lives here, but yeah, it's, 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 it's an excellent representative of the firm. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions, believe it or not. IT? Do you have an IT firm? or? We contracted. Contracted out to? Uh, LaBelle Services, I think it is. Tom LaBelle. Mm -hmm. He's a resident right here in town. That's easy. Yeah, I'd always be interested in both. 
Well, we got to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, I'd like to be able to remote in from home, so I'd talk to that person about setting that up. And who are your auditors? Yeah, that's good we question. don't have a VPN set up. Okay. Um, well, I say that. We have to check with them. Um, Christian may be able to. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can, but there are, there are definitely um, tools out there. You can use like TeamViewer mm -hmm. um, to get into your machine. So there's tools out there. Yeah. So we don't necessarily have to be on a VPN. I think how they probably set it up. Our IT person oh. can talk to your IT person. Yeah. That's all. Well, that was on me. So I'm not even certain we're actually on a network here. It must be a server. Yeah. Hmm. Good question. We have a no, server. What do, you use for, what do you use for finance software? Um, QuickBooks. Uh, maybe not. Right. No. I'll find out about this. We may not even be on a server, so basically you would take a laptop home and, um, yeah. Okay. I mean, and this isn't done yet. This may not even be done yet, alleyway, but there's something I've been thinking about for a while is, you know, setting up a drive, having a drive mm -hmm. and folders. And, we do. And, we use them well, we do, but I mean, Google having, 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 having a, yeah, it's Google Drive, yeah. but I mean, having a it network, needs organized. network That's drive and having it be broken up into organized folders um, and stuff like that. It's semi-organized, it just take a little bit of time to, yeah, it could be improved for sure. Definitely. All I know is when I have a problem, I call my business manager, and all of a sudden the cursor starts flying around on my computer, mm -hmm. and within a minute or two it's fixed, and I don't even want to know what it did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not an IT guy. I'll check on what we have. Ken does this one. Yeah, I don't know that we have a network, and I don't know that we actually have central service. I think it's all um, text okay. machine, instruction okay. machine. How do, you, how do you do emails? Within Google. 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 Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, our repository is Google as well. Small town. Paper records? Uh, <laughs> some, yeah. some, but uh, we use Google Drive as, as much as possible. We're trying to tackle that tiger and rye. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy um, Well, that's one of the, um, our last town administrator was working towards digitization. Yes. Um, yeah. But it, there's a very big cost there. It is. Mm -hmm. A lot of planning. A lot of work, too. Yeah. Um, Do you so feel comfortable where you are with your budget right now? Budget process. Um, um, next year. In terms of our expenditure, I think we're good. Close. Um, but our process, and no. We would like some guidance on that. I mean, so not uncomfortable totally, but definitely need some guidance. On what part of it? Um, well, definitely closing out the year yeah. and working on the proposed budget. Yeah. I don't have any other questions. Um, does the board want to make a decision now, or do we want to contemplate what we've heard? Uh, are we meeting to tomorrow for budget? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Contemplate it. Yeah. We'll even, though it's budget, okay. even though it's budget Great. tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. we can bring it up. Sure. We'll right. Thank you very Thanks much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Take care. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too. Cheers. All right. So. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Uh, it's an interesting concept, for sure. A lot of people think about and contemplate. Yeah. Um. So. That's and then the input. Is there is there any community oh. input? Community input. <laughs> Lorraine Hansen, uh, Watson Lane. I just wanted to double check that you had an opportunity to put in the minutes from last, or will be putting in the minutes, um, whatever writings there are that would make sure that the uh, commercial vehicles don't have to be taxed. Yes. Um, as long as that gets in the minutes, that's, I just want to make sure that you're yeah, all no, that's a good point. I, I think probably something um, has that, but I think we need a policy. I, I, I don't have anything. Okay. Well, all right. But that's, that was my concern, that you have something to protect. Right, in case another year, a new board has to go over again. Yeah. Or two years. Right, so you have it all there, so you're protected. Okay. And the no, town is protected. Well, I actually know what happened after the last regular meeting. Mm. Okay. It was brought up as a concern. Yeah. And we probably hadn't addressed it the second time. Yeah. yeah, no, thanks. That was addressed in the last meeting. Yeah. Okay. Actually, uh, and I want to make a note that maybe we draft a little bit of policy.
policy and the personnel, or in the, not personnel, but in a, one of our documents that we have something on paper. Yeah, I think, I think that's really necessary. That would, I think it protects everybody that way. Because if there's no writing, then nobody knows what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want to be sure that there's something that exempts um, the taxation in that writing. Okay. Um, anybody else in the room? Um, okay. Carrie, is there a hand raised? Hi, Carrie Boyle, Covent Road. Um, so I, I think that I think that was Lorraine speaking, and I'm not sure. Um, but I think you guys were speaking about the P and J buses. Um, so, and I, I didn't realize, um, well, I had also sent an email to the board today um, because I know that there was, and, and maybe things have happened, um, maybe I missed some things in the previous meeting, um, but I did send an email to today because I know that there had still been some concerns about the legality of the, um, of, you know, not not taking in those fees or waiving those fees, um, and I know that um, there were some questions about the board um, whether or not the board would seek a legal opinion. Has that been resolved? Um, because my email today to the board, um, and I'll just say it, and I I did um, ask that it be submitted into the meeting minutes um, in its entirety. Um, but I was just pointing out, so I apologize if this had already been sent, but um, that the town clerk is an agent of the state authorized to process registrations for the New Hampshire Division of Motor Vehicles and govern the New Hampshire Division of Motor Vehicles in these matters. Um, and it's, it's also what the former town clerk and our current town clerk um, they, you know, they serve in this capacity. Um, and so in that, in that email today, I also, um, I referred to uh, the registration and municipal agents in New Hampshire, uh, on the newhampshire.gov site. And I also included a screenshot from a uh, text message between the former uh, town clerk and Kathleen Dement, um, where Kathleen does say also that the CNJ buses are permanent plates. Um, they are state buses with a contract, so no town fees on them. So if the, if the whole thing was already resolved, that's great. Um, my point in sending the letter was, I was just hoping that um, the select board could kind of move on from this issue um, without um, still considering a legal legal opinion on this. Um, I, I just think with this information from Kathleen DeMint, um, I just, and I just think it's a matter that needs to be, if it hasn't already been, we need to move past it. And if there are still concerns of the legality, then um, it, people should just follow up directly with the Division of Motor Vehicles. That's all. I'm just going to comment. I don't think there's a concern about legality. I just think there's a concern about um, documentation. documentation and making sure that it, it, hypothetically speaking, in three years, if all of us aren't here, it doesn't repeat itself. Yeah, I just, I also think, too, that I think that falls within the town clerk's office. Um, and, and again, I think it just becomes a thing like that's between the town clerk and the Division of Motor Vehicles, and I would hope that even in the future, so if this is documented, it doesn't come before the select board, um, you know, because it's, it's not really something that the select board really should have. I think in this instance where nobody was really sure of the process, but it shouldn't have been something that had to come before the select board in the first place, is, is my thought on that. That was all. Um, Thank you, Carrie. I I the so one thing I actually, as I thought more about that is really, I mean, maybe it is 
on the town clerk to define his process and to document this as part of his process. True, I agree with that. Um, so I made a note. Um, I mean, if we're in agreement on that, then we can ask Dan to make it part of his process. I don't know what he has for documentation. Yeah, I'll put them in a minute. But we can ask him. Yeah, I think it was, since he's most familiar, I think you have to pull it on it. You can just put it in the I, I did speak, um, I did email with Dan, I emailed him a copy of the email that I sent to the board, um, and Dan had told me that he has, they have, you know, he has documented that process. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I don't know specifically what it is. And then I just have two more things after, once you guys move on, so. Um, okay. Um, can, I, can I say those? Or? Sure, yeah. Um, I know that the um, MRI is gone, but they did ask a question about the town auditors, so I just wanted to mention that Stu Mays and Berland out of Summersworth. Okay. Those are the town auditors. They, they asked the question, but also asked another question um, right after. Um, and then in regards to MRI and the town administrator, um, I know that they had a, um, Caroline had provided um, the, there was the transition document that I, I believe you guys all went through, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if it was about specific roles and responsibilities, but um, I was wondering if uh, MRI um, and or Mike, um, I think that's his name, mm -hmm. and had an opportunity to look at that list and determine you know, other than, I know I heard them say that they don't really handle the finance responsibilities, and then there was a question of meeting, um, attending meetings, you know, like evening meetings and other boards and committees, but I didn't know if they had an opportunity to go through that transition list and identify any other areas that they don't perform or they don't normally see performed by town administrators in other towns that not they yet. work for. No, no, not yet, Carrie. Um, actually, it did come up that I have a transition document, and um, Mike would be interested in seeing that. So if we agree um, we go to go forward, forward. Okay. yeah, we would give him the, um, the current job description and that transition document once we're under contract with them. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let me see if there's anybody else outside. <coughs> Uh, no other hands? Okay, great. Um, so, um, right. I did find in the minutes that it was referenced, the CMJ registrations. Um, so, let's see. Yeah. So, it basically was noted that, um, yeah, it was in the 1014. Okay. Or 10 four, sorry. 10 10 four. Four. Did everybody get a chance to read all three sets of minutes? Um, I read um, the ones that are listed in the agenda. So in the 10 four minutes, it referenced basically it says um, all gas related conversation with Kathy DeMed on uh, New Hampshire BMP. There are five buses in question and permanent plates owned by the state that are leased by CMJ that are not required to pay registration. Kate spoke. Um, I won't go like read the whole thing, but we did note that uh, Paul actually. <laughs> Um, Lorraine commented and Paul um, said the act of not collecting registration fee is not a waiver as the buses belong to the state. Um, and you went on to approve with the town clerk to go ahead and register. Yeah, so was I correct on that? I just want to make sure I'm correct in my quote then. That the, the bus, the states are actually owned by the state. The buses are actually owned by the Yeah, they are. All right. Mm -hmm. So what was corrected? Oh, no, I corrected some other things. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some oh, oh, other oh, things. Okay, okay. On the minutes of, is it 10-6? 10-4. 10-4, mm -hmm. last one? Yeah. You had in there that uh, that I changed my mind. Yes. You guys, yeah, but I, I want to add something in there. Okay. I changed my mind as part of negotiation. Okay. Because our role is to really look at both sides of the fence and, and deal with it and learn. As part of negotiation. Right. Okay, I'll put that in. Anything else, Doug? No. Okay. So 928, 927, you're um, okay with I'm fine with this. And now 104 is okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll make a motion to select the consent calendar for. Second. 104, 928, 927, just so we get all three dates. Okay. Second. 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 Second.
All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right, so um, I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Let's bring up police first. Nothing no, no, nothing's personal, no. George. <laughs> How is everyone? Good. Good. How are you? Wonderful. Um, you got to bring this first. I have two purchase orders. Uh, both come out of the dispatch line, and they both involve our IMC software that that runs everything. This is what we run through Dispatch and County. This runs our systems. This is what our servers. So the first one is to Central Square, which used to be IMC. IMC has just been bought out, so now they have a different name. But it's still the IMC software. So this is the second half. Earlier in the year, we paid the first half to Dispatch. Now this is the second bill from Dispatch that we need to pay. So it is to Central Square for $3,806.25. And here's the invoice that breaks down everything that is included in IMC. So is this a one-time or an annual thing? This is an annual thing. So we budget about $10,000 in this batch line. Mm -hmm. And it's broken down into two. Basically, at the beginning of the year, we pay the first half. And at the end of the year, we pay the second. Yeah. So I have that expended at $88.95 already. Could that be right? That shouldn't be. Not um, from the dispatch line. Yeah. Well, I, I got the um, the end of month from um, from Chuck. Mm -hmm. So I can double check that. Because you said it's really two payments? Right. Okay. And there's always extra built in. So we should not yeah. have expended that much already. Okay. What's the PO number, John? It is I, two, you know what? zero two seven. Yeah, I have 88 John, but I'll check on that. Yeah, we, we didn't spend that yet. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move, we can discuss it, but I'm going to move forward. PO 2027 for Central Square for $3,806.25. Second. Um, um, is there any discussion? Yeah. Any concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And the second one would be made out to SHI, S-H-I, and this is our software, so Police General Intercept X Advanced License Renewal. This is what protects every computer in our downstairs building and our MTDs as well. So this would be for 14 licenses, and the price per license is $39 a piece. Uh, the software technically expired on October 11th, but they've been still protecting us so we could get this signed tonight. And it'd be for five hundred and forty-six dollars, and this was also built into the dispatch line, and that's PO two zero two six. All right, so we move forward with PO two zero two six for Shai for software for five hundred forty-six dollars. Second. Um, is there any discussion? No. I, I just have a quick question. So. I'm just trying to relate. So, a few years back, or roughly about a few years mm -hmm. back, when we had some issues with the town and um, the incident with the Dovacom. Yes. And our uh, town website got on that. So you, that was you. Were you protected from? Did this that software protect you from yes. outside bomb bombs? Yes. So okay. they hacked our Facebook page. Yep. Yeah. And I got um, they hacked our dispatch line okay. through Stratford County. But our actual IMC software was protected. And we none of our computers were compromised, none of our systems were compromised. And the, and the actual police station. Was Correct. Okay. It was That's just our Facebook page and <laughs> Okay. I figured it out, John. Uh, okay. This I don't know where this came from, but this is the 2020 budget. Okay. Um, you made me nervous. <laughs> sorry. No, you're good. Um, so this is the 2021 budget, and um, it's at 52 percent now. So you're good. Perfect. Okay. That makes much more yeah. sense. I'm not really sure what this came from. Okay. So we just got to finish. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. This is what it's saying. Sorry, you, you like me? I think I paid the bill twice. Twelve two six four hundred. I know originally trick or treat had come up. Are we have um, taken care of that's that. Done. That's done. Okay. <laughs> no, that's good. Thanks for letting us know about that, though. I yeah. know there was a few residents that had asked questions. It's made its way. Saturday night. Yes. Five to seven made its way to WMUR, our Facebook page, the town Facebook page. So I've seen it all around now. 
Good. And Foster's normally picks up on those as well. Okay. So everyone buy lots of candy. Um, so are we ready to talk about the homeless? Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so actually maybe George, you could give us a little bit of an update of what's happening out there as well. So why was it that Highway had to go out to clean up all this garbage? So I, as I've told you folks, I've been out there several times and uh, kind of made a little buddy out there. He's uh, very loyal to me and yeah, it's kind of cute. I got a call from his mom the other day just to let me know he was going to be with her for a few days in case I went out there and he wasn't there. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, so we've, he definitely keeps us informed of what's going on out there. He took the time over the years to gather up all the trash that has been left behind by people for, I'm going to as much trash as you pulled out, it's got to be years. years, years of trash. Yeah, that was a big pile. Yeah. That was huge. And uh, he put it on one consolidated pile and asked if we would be able to remove it. So I came to George and Ed, and they were kind enough to go out and uh, actually remove the pile today. So that took care of that problem. How much do you think it was a ton? Half a ton? I took like this. He was full. We the right over. So. Yeah. It was a lot of trash. I mean, Weight-wise, so, it's, I don't know, yeah, you might, yeah, you probably I'm surprised if you get the truck in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. We made a little. <laughs> so the gentleman's name out there is Jeff. He's extremely friendly. Um, Jeff's had a chance to meet him. Uh, he's kind of like the mayor out there. He keeps things uh, under control and the, the misfits out and kind of runs a tight ship out there. Okay. Um, what's, so, what, with, what, with what's going on with Summersworth? Hey, do, do you, do you see that impacting us? I just heard when I came in here. I haven't seen the news article myself. So I don't know if what the position was to lay low for a while. Yeah, because they, they behave themselves out there. They're not our issue. Yeah. And uh, I mean, certainly we can't have a tent city like Summer's Worth and Bilbrey. That would become a so lot of problems. What I'm going to suggest is we keep a close eye on what's going on there. Mm -hmm. And if, when, I shouldn't say if, when they do remove people there, that we do monitor our yeah. situation because if it becomes overrun, we it, know that would be more know. than the police, our police fire would be able to handle. Right. There were a lot of issues going on in that town city. And yeah. we would own it. Yeah. We'd own it then. So, that's the question. Um, so, so, yeah, that's so, like the beginning of November. So, I, I, don't, I don't want to put anybody in spotlight or anything like that, but, you know, if, if, you hear from mm -hmm. your quote-unquote friend that it's changing rapidly or even changing yeah. a little bit. Call us. Yeah, what we have good. now is five to six, eight people out there that are very well behaved, stay themselves, don't cause headaches. They um, stay all winter? He does. Yes. He's the only one on winter record? They, they're hit or miss, uh, depending on what the weather is. Do you have somebody to take me out this weekend, John? Sure. I'm actually on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, okay. Let's, let's so. coordinate a time then. Yeah, I'll um, be on uh, seven to three both days. I think I'm a little, I'm a little concerned about doing nothing at this point um, because um, I understand like the beginning of November, they're they're clearing out Willand Pond. Mm -hmm. So once they're, um, at, you know, out behind Demolas, it's I feel like it's going to be harder to get them out than it is to make sure we don't grow the population. Um, so. I, I, I think we just need to tread very lightly on the situation until it becomes a bigger issue. Yeah. If he can go out and monitor it, and he does on a regular basis, yes. but as you see, I know them all out He knows there. everybody out there. So, so I have to circle back, though. What do we tell the people that have to look at the tents? They can't see, they, they can't see them. So now you're talking about one house at another place. So The residents on Kellen Drive is still yet to actually call us and file a complaint, so I'm still not sure what they're referring to. But what I'm speaking about, you can't see Kelvin, they can't see this. So I'm not sure what that resident is referring to. There is one resident um, that says that yeah. they can see them. Yeah, there's no way they can, not from Kelvin. Okay, I need to go out. They're seeing them when they're walking out. Yeah. That's what I think is happening, is they're walking out, there's a path out of there. And I think it's someone different. And it is somebody different. Yeah, because our specific group are respectful and go out towards the market basket, the backside of the market basket. Right the market. Okay. Yeah, you can see the trail that they have versus the one 
Then you have the power lines in Kelwin, and there's another trail that goes down there. So we have to do some research someday and see what's well, really down there. I, well, so I made a commitment to go up to this president's home to see mm -hmm. what they see. Um, so I'll do that this weekend as well. I would love to go to the blowing because sure. I'm not sure what they're referring to. Myself. Okay. I'll do that. So let's um, connect um, sure. for the, you know, probably by Friday and figure something out. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, so if, if I have to raise the question, if people start moving from Willand to Kelwin, um, have we given any thought? No. I mean, we have, but we don't have a solution. Um, so one of the solutions, and actually, um, I don't know if it was George, maybe, or Caroline mentioned it. We, at um, Bicentennial Park, it's post, posted you no know, overnight. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I think that's enforceable. Well, the thing with Bicentennial Park is it's an actual gazebo, and you're stopping people from loitering in that gazebo. You're talking just about woods that these people are in, so it's it's, it's going to be hard to go properties. right. But it's going to be hard to go out there at all hours of the night and enforce a versus my guys doing a business check at a Bicentennial Park and coming down from the churches or whatever and. You see someone there, it's easy to say, hey, sir, ma'am, this is closed, can you please move on? Well, I, I think the point was that if there, if it's posted, then you have something to yeah. enforce. If, you, if well, you really want to keep people from moving in there. Yeah. Well, I think what would, you would have to do, though, is if you post that specific property, you're probably looking at posting all the town right. property that way. Right, exactly. So. Because, and I've said this a number of times, if it was happening on Silver Street on town property, it wouldn't be happening. You know, it just, it wouldn't fly. Yeah. Um, so, I think we have to think about that idea. But do we have the bandwidth to enforce it if we do it? Mm -hmm. Not well, town wide. Next year. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious about that. Yeah. No. I mean, mm -hmm. so, we, so, do we know what the intent of the summons were? And I believe it's part of the whole, but um, the article I read, and there's been more than one article in process, but the article I read was, Thomas Summersworth was working with the people behind Willow mm -hmm. Pond. Mm -hmm. um, and it was led in the article from Fosses that they were going to be offered some kind of assistance for living, whether it's, I didn't say hotels or mm -hmm. cheap apartments or whatever. Right. So I guess part of the thing we have to see is if, you know, if there's 60 people there and 40 mm -hmm. people decide to take. Temporary house, and then you have the 20 people you have to worry about as opposed to 60, which 20 is still a lot, and where they go, I don't know. It could be a yeah. very large impact on the budget, too. Yeah, I, I, again, I express my concerns. It's a no win. I mean, a lot of these people are in mental crisis, there's no help for them, they need better paying jobs. There's apartments that are $1,500 for yeah. one bedroom, it's over. Yeah. I mean, you're not even going to get a chance to go to work. Right. So it's it's a little bit of a over there though because some of them guys are saying buyers out there, they're doing everything out there where this this group here seems like they're just minding their yeah. own business, you know? It's just I'm just worried about them moving over, the people yeah. from some of the moving over. I mean, and the, how the, the dynamic that. is completely different of what the situation is. That's why I said you gotta keep evaluating as it unfolds itself. Yeah, I understand your concern. It's been my concern for since I've been on the board. Really. I just start saying there's enough resources to help these people. They need help, and right now New Hampshire doesn't have the resources in yeah, place. This guy well, that's the other there. thing they don't. The guy that's living out there doesn't want to be bothered. Right. right. Is that true of all the people that live out there? No, some are in crisis and need help, and they just haven't been able to receive it. This one specific gentleman, he just kind of likes living off the grid and it works for him and that's why he stays out there all winter. Do, does it make sense for the people who want help to take a step towards reaching out to some of the resources even if it's, I hate to say it out loud, but even if they come to us mm -hmm. and we try to help them? It makes perfect sense, they just have to want to do it. So right. Sometimes they need an extra little push and we all do once in a while. Alright, so we'll connect before the weekend, John. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Any other things? Uh, yeah, we got a couple things. Still.
Oh, with the security system. I do have this. I'm going to leave this with the board. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I got called away in the middle of this, so I know Sean said he was going to be here tonight. Sean was uh, the one who went through everything with Burns. Mm -hmm. So um, I know a lot of the expenses in there was a request of the former TA wanting the uh, doors, the swipes for all the doors. I don't think personally that's maybe needed up here. Downstairs we do, but not necessarily up here. I think we could probably whack about fourteen to sixteen thousand right off the top of that if we just put those out. So does Sean yeah. agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Well what is the cost for one reader like two grand? Yeah. It's gonna be four thousand just for those yeah. front doors. How do they want the fire station? <laughs> um I don't know. And the readers in the fire station? I don't know. I have to look at it again. But if we just stay with the keys up, up here, we would, I think, we have all the 14000 that we would knock that price back down. So, because right now it's almost $60,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I'll make copies of this. Okay. Or get so, but um, Sean could definitely go through that with you. Okay. And, uh, all right. Is, okay. I'm guessing, I mean, I went by the fire station and there was one truck out of there. Well, Sean's been working on the system all day. Oh, okay. And uh, Burns has been in there doing the wiring. And, okay. stuff, so. and they will be doing the wiring in the police department next week. So that's going to get upgraded. Yeah. All right. So. Great. Okay. You got Thank you. You got anything else? No, I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Have a good night. George, you only have to eat more now. That's right. Make it easy. <laughs> you too. Have a good night. $1,628. So it's um, double, almost double the appropriation. Okay, half of that. Some of that is supposed to be road maintenance. Oh, okay. Yep. So that's where it was. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think that the gravel should be about half of the appropriated. Yeah, and the rest goes in. probably didn't split the bill. Though. Right, you didn't change the word line. Okay. Uh, well, I got a PO for PO number 2039 to Brock's for a for two thousand dollars worth of gravel and putting stocks to the project stock and road maintenance that we need to do if, if it comes out between now and next spring. So we need to have some stock. Okay. So that'll be our uh, the gravel money, which is they should be about twenty five hundred days. Yes. No, well gravel um that's overspent. Gravel sh that's on there. Yeah. That's overspent should go back in row. Eleven thousand of that should. Okay, so uh, the last uh, bill should go into row. Yeah, most of that should be road maintenance. It was Dog Sligo Road and okay. uh, Tommy Road Shoals. Was that Brock's you said? Yes. Okay. I can check with Chuck on that. Yeah, I asked him to give me an update on that too. I knew he was busy this morning, so. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think where I was the other day, but I noticed. Uh, the crack, the ceiling cracks, you know, they were like ceiling pretty good, it was pretty good whenever order was on. Did you say it was for Sligo? It was Sligo, that Brox bill was under Sligo? They, well, this last bill was for Clement. Okay, okay gravel for Clement stuff, so. Okay. This one here? That one? No, that this is a stop. You that one in? Yes. It was coming under gravel for yeah. uh, every day. Okay. Not normal. Got it. Um, all right. Uh, so um, I'll make a motion to accept PO 2039 for 
for Brock's for two thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Patches they need for Casey paving to uh, repair some road patches that we need to do is $5,200. Going to take that on road maintenance. Okay. Uh, the PO is going to be 2037. And I'm oh, sorry, can you restate that what that was for? Uh, various patches. And we have one driveway on Woods Run that has a, that is, the people weren't happy with, with the way the paving was because they bought everything out coming out of it. So we're going to fix the edge of that. That's mm -hmm. to repair that, repair uh, a front of a driveway down on 2nd Street, which is I was worried about. I was going to do no go mill that did a big pass that needs to be done down there. Do we do it or we do not do it? That's another case of did they make a decision on that road yet? Or? Can we do the big hole in the town hall parking lot? Can we fix the big hole in the park, town hall parking lot? Where? It's, a, it's like right, it's always a big puddle. I seem to always park in it. Oh, puddle. It's not a broken. It's not broken up. Yeah, no, yeah it's, it's just broken. Yeah. It's been on there. Depression. Yeah. Things oh. been on it for a while. Oh, yeah. That was gonna. We were gonna. That's, yeah, I remember. We we're gonna paint that. But you're patching, right? Just patching. Yeah. This is good. Cut out and pass a few places where the road is actually broken. And that old mill, old uh, Indigo Hill Road that I showed you earlier. Yeah. Old Indigo Hill, not the Old Mill Lane. Old Mill Road. Uh, uh, old Indigo Hill. Yeah. So Indigo Hill, um, who else? The driveway 90, Old Mill, I mean 90 Woods Run, that entrance to the driveway is about two feet wide. We've got to just take that belly out of it so they're not bothering, no. And, uh, the big old wood in front of the town. <laughs> nothing in front of the town, but we can fix that if you want to. <laughs> I'm just going to All right, keep going. Keep going. Where's uh, John Indigo Hill? Second Street. Second Street. Second Street, and there is a big, big one in front of where the hydro plant is going down the mill, the mill property, going down to the, down to the library. And no. is that Town Road or is that not Town Road? That's what I thought we talked about that before. And we yeah, haven't thought about that, 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 but I think we ought to fix that. Okay. Because a lot of it is in, a, is in the travel portion that we plow. So, is this that, but we, we, we were, no, no, this is hot talk. That's why I'm having But I thought we were going to just patch it, though. That's all this is going to be. We're not going to fix the road. Right. I, I, okay. That is part of this. Okay. To fix that big hole that's there. Okay. Um, so Casey's coming out and doing all these? Well, they will as soon as we get them okay. Um, okay. Can we, so is there any room in there at all to fix the hole in front of town hall? Or is that pretty a pretty hard estimate? I'll have to look at the hole. We can probably <laughs> fix that. We're going to have to patch one from the fire station now. Okay. Yeah, I found that. Yeah. Why? Well, that in front of the fire station. We're going to pass the one in front of the fire station itself. It's big. This is, these here have to be dug up, ground down with the machine and stuff. Okay. And they can carry a lot more hot talk okay. and last a lot longer for, for them to, yeah. prop, to you know, cut the property properly. So this is PO number 2037 for 5200 Why are you cutting holes in the park on the fire station? Because there is, well, I'm going to tell you why. Why? Why is there a wire? Because in the past years, they buried all the water shutoffs. Main Street, you can't find a water shut off because the state just decides. Well, is, is there one in there? What's that? Is there one in that parking lot? There is one in front of the fire station. We measured, they had a map. And it was wrong. Right? We measured to where it was. Yeah, we found it. Oh, we found did you find it? No, we found the wire. <laughs> I know you found the wire. I saw the wire. Did you find the shot off? Nope. No. Not yet. So he's got EJ Prescott, which is the big company that does waterworks and all that. They have it. Of course, they you don't buy the, the best of equipment to locate shut off. So they have to, they're going to have the company come in and demonstrate that at the fire station, find out where the shut off is, so they'll be able to locate it. That's dirty. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> and so it may be more than one hole, but uh, it's all going to be on the water department there, so we'll get the hot tub to fix here at the same time. <laughs> hmm. It's going to be one load and it's going to be built to them. All right. 
George, just a question about this estimate. Do we have a written estimate from them? Yes, I do. I have it on my desk. Okay. Can you bring that next time you come? Uh, sure. Okay, thanks. And I'm probably going to bring you that one for Hall Road since I think we're going to be okay with road money to do that $6,000 stretch of Hall Road and get it out of the way. Okay. Yeah, Hall Road's pretty rough. That is rough. Do we need to um, check with Chuck on um, what the up to date balance That's what is? I wanted. To. That's why I hesitated on the other one. Okay. Because of the Hall Road. But if that money's there, let's do it. Okay. And, and Casey said he can fit that in. That's only a couple passes for paper, so. Yeah, because we need to figure out, too, how much went into sand and gravel that needs to go into road. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'll make a motion to accept PO2037 to Casey Paving for $5,200. Yeah. We did. I, I did well with that, you guys for us. Mine's a little different. Okay, so, we go ahead. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know the answer already. Go ahead. So, the front door and the walls surrounding it of this town hall needs to be painted. Do you think someone who the works for it? What? The front door here? Yeah. That wasn't part of the portico, was it? No, it wasn't. It was terrible. We should have made that. We should have. Yeah. Have the money. Pitch a convenience. So I think that the question is, is that something one of your guys could do? Yeah. Potentially. So we're just painting the door? The and door the and the wall around it. Yeah, the wall. If it looks like you can make it all look good. Yes. It's it's not a big enough job for a contract. No, no. No, that should have been part of the portico. Well, it wasn't, so what kind of can you fix it? We'll take a look. Take a, take a look if you think you can do it. Let us know. So we can also ask Richard if you know something. Just a quick question. It's not really for you, it's really for us, but it was brought up. So, going back to the accident on Bay Road with the tower, with the guy that got hurt. I mean, the Clement Road. Clement Road. Clement Road. Clement Road. Clement Road. Clement Road. Um, and we talked about going after the company that did it. Has anybody, has anybody done any type of movement on that? No. We just talked about it, right? I made a note. Okay. So, no one has an action item. <coughs> no. I wonder if there's a time limit. Would you like to take that action? Sure. I mean, you have all the, all the information, but I'll, I'll definitely look it up. Um, I think at first we need to reach out to Primex, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get you so I need mean, the information about. And I don't know who to check with with Primex. No, I can check no, with Primex. Yeah, let's check. All right. Let's just, we'll just do a little follow up. Uh, I, I, I don't mind talking to Chuck. So what, do, what, what should we be looking for? I think we should be getting our police department to pay that. I was going to have to pay the police department out of my budget. All right. Eight hours yeah. coverage for the police department, which I mean, is you know, maximum. I, 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 for, for the day of the paving, they shut down the day. You know, I mean, at least get coverage for the police department. Well, that was going to cost us. That we be ready to pay. Right. You know, I mean, it's an accident that shouldn't have happened. So we go after the vendor, the person, not, not we go after the person right. who caused and the accident. They accident. may have to go to, they insurance. may have to check with Brox and find out who they're, Brock said that he'll let us know all the information. I haven't heard nothing from their insurance guy, but yeah. Primex should check with them and deal with them. Okay. <clears throat> so, Paul, did you say you're volunteering? Because yeah. I saw Jack from the woods down. Yeah, I just, I just got to know the second third party. That's probably what we need to do. I think we'll have to deal with Brock on that. They know the name of all these things because, of course, it affected their equipment too. All right. That's not a problem either. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Good. Okay. That's all I got. Anything else, George? Um, no, I, I, all I can tell you is we have a serial number for our new sidewalk machine. However, trucking is an issue that we have to see there. Um, Hopefully, we get it before the snow flies. So is, well is it coming from somewhere inside the states, right? Yes, yeah. Bobcat is American made. Yeah, okay. So, 
Not like we've seen the latest, but there's a lot of shipping containers that stuck on. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not one of them. But uh, I guess they said trucking has got an issue, and of course it has been everybody. So uh, yeah, that's... hopefully we'll have it. <coughs> yeah. Winter is coming. There's nothing for the transfer station that I'm aware of. Uh, everything seems to be going okay. Um, we're going to hopefully start doing crosswalks, small painting crosswalks. We got a good week ahead of us, so yeah. we're going to a good week for that. A good week to get it done. We haven't had a chance to get much of that stuff done, but we're going to try to get it. We should be able to do it all in a couple days anyway. We don't have a lot of them. So. Yeah, it's a nice week, and then God knows what could be coming pretty quick. Um, just a question for you. So, um, one of the residents kind of mentioned like how overgrown it is right down here on Main Street around the sidewalks. Whose responsibility is it to kind of keep that cut back? Is it the state? Because it's the state. Main Street. Where? Now, what part of Main Street? Down right down here. Like. The, the oh, on the sidewalks. Yeah. Sidewalks are out actually ours, and this over here has always been an issue. We, uh, of course, we, we're going to go out there this fall and clean the leaf fall. We're going to have to cut back all the stuff. You can pick up all the leaves out there. Yeah, it's pretty overgrown. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, I wish that people would call here instead of, I mean, call us. You know, when they have a complaint, we want to take care of that. We don't, oh, you know, there's most of the stuff that's going in and not out. It's just dumb ones. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we can take care of it if it's obstructing. But if we're not knowing about a lot of that stuff, that's where it becomes an issue. Yeah, you might just take a look just around down yeah. here. Um, oh, I'm aware of that over here now. It would, when we come up with, uh, when we were paving and stuff, I was looking at a lot of that stuff. It was time consuming, you know, with, with what we've had going on, it takes a little time to okay. break away from other projects sometimes. So So it's on your radar? Well, yeah, because we're going to hopefully clean that sidewalk up, you know, with, well, with the leaves and stuff and all that coming up. We'd like to get the leaves picked up before snow flies, though. Okay. Thank you. Uh, like I said, we'll be starting with the crosswalk. The painting, line painting will be done hopefully this week. So I don't think uh, we have anything else going on. Uh, oh, I haven't got to build some CMU so I'm not sure if that's going to be yet on all the inspections. So, of course, that's going to be. What do they normally run? You know? it, the inspections are not bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's when we get the extra. Oh, we well, got to fix it. got to fix that. Had a lot of extra. Yeah. And maintenance budget took a big, big hit this year. You know, we had a lot of major, in, major problems with uh, stuff starting right off the bat. So, we, so tried, to to we, we tried to be conservative and uh, we hit burn so. Yeah. Well, I didn't know maybe we took care of all your stuff last year. No mm -hmm. issues this year. C and J caught a lot of stuff last year. Good. And uh, unfortunately, there was a few other things that happened this year. I mean, the years that the trust been going to Dover, uh, I think a lot of stuff was missed. And so you, you're happier here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They, Same thing with fire department. Them guys are inspecting their trucks like their buses. Yeah. Those trucks like their buses. I mean, Dover was inspecting the trucks, but I don't think they were doing it. They, they were just giving you the yeah, sticker. Just off the back. <laughs> and, and, and it showed with the fire department last year, too, that they had trucks that needed brakes. You don't need we never need brakes on a bike. You know, I mean, we had put tires on a few bikes and, and stuff like that and batteries, but that was not an inspection thing. I mean, the tires were, and that's been taken care of, so. But, uh, you know, other, you know, I think we were in pretty good shape. I do want to, we're still in budgets, and I think we're going to have to make a, a correction on salt. We're seeing prices coming in at 20 Twenty-five dollars a ton higher than they were. Jesus, so much anything salt. is not going up. This is going up. We paid fifty dollars and some change last year. I think that time. So how much do you? How much do you get? Uh, I mean, I mean just, is it? I get it as we need it. I get the shop this year. So, so, it, it, money, so, so uh, it is. Is it five thousand dollars? Ten thousand dollars? Three thousand a ton? I'm thinking the increases of. Uh, we buy, we lock in a 4,000 ton. So you lock Now you lose 4,000 ton. But you lock it in at a certain price, right? Correct. Right. So we guarantee ourselves to have it if we have a bad winter and stuff right. like that. I mean, since I've been here, I don't know if we've used, you know, 1,200 tons, because that's what we, with, for the money we have. 
is what we've been buying, you know. So is it the I use or the town's people's use? I use. It's, uh, I mean, it's the roads. We have a salt shed, a salt, have salt sand salt shed for the, for the public. Right. And, I mean, they're not using a lot of, yeah. you know, we mix that with coal. Uh, we mix that with either sand or uh, uh, stone dust to keep, you know, so they're not getting direct salt. But, uh, yeah, I, as soon as last... Are last we week, done buying salt for this year, though? I salt shit, probably. Probably not done. Okay. Well, in this calendar year, I should say. Uh, no. Okay. Because we don't know what November and December is going to bring. Okay. I don't buy it unless I can put a couple of drill loans in at a time. And uh, if I've got money in the budget left, we can end the year, I will fill it again. It's a couple thousand. Well, so as a, there's, there's a couple thousand dollars left. Right. You're going to get the contract from either. We've been dealing with more than salt since I've been here. Their price was a little higher last year than the others, so I called them up and said, uh, you still want to sell the salt? Their price became lower. So I'll wait for their contract price to come in. I got one from Eastern Minerals, which I think usually Granite Minerals and Portsmouth. And they're at sixty some odd dollars a ton right now. I'm not exactly sure on the number. What is uh, Morton? Morton had that. Yeah, I'm waiting on that price. But uh, so you play one more. against the other. Uh, right, but I'm seeing towns get saying they're getting their prices seventy six dollars a ton. I don't know who they deal with, if they all their own or what have you. But these are delivery prices for us. Is, uh, it was just over sixty, maybe close to sixty five dollars, which is. It's a fifteen dollar increase over last year. You know, so I they've been going down for two years. They were they were going up one year they went up uh and it's been on the hold. But I'm thinking that in the that line on the budget we might want to add a little bit to that where it's uh that we've been dealing with the twenty five thousand dollars so I think we might have to work on that one a little bit. That's a heavy increase. I mean, I, I, like I said, I don't run the salt the whole time we're plowing. It's just beginning and, you know, and at the end we hit it hard if we have to. But it's, we're not riding around salting all the time. So that's, I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping that more in terms of their budget pretty, pretty quick. The sand stay pretty much the same? I don't use it. Not at all. The only one that gets... I use sand uh, for is uh, the salt shed yeah. um, for the public. Right. And if we have a storm where we might have to load a truck to put some on where, where it gets real cold and it's, the salt is not working, which is usually down about 10 degrees, we don't have too many of them. Uh, and we, we can, you know, run a layer of salt on a road, or sand salt on a road if we have to. But I don't spread it like some towns do. Put sand and salt, you've got to clean it up. And add more to your clean up in the spring. So, looking at it both ways that way. No, stormwater help. Stormwater help you done that. Right. So, I mean, we, you know, everything's computerized for our trucks, so it makes it a lot easier to see how much we're putting out and what have you. So, we put putting only so many tons per mile. It's really pounds per mile, it's not tons per mile like, you know, mm -hmm. like they used to do before. So, is that, just curious, that's how it works. You set a certain amount to draw the computer mile. in the truck. You're driving along, you slow down, the, spin, the, 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 the chain slows down, you know, you set the door at a certain, you're setting the door at about an inch and a half all the time. You can speed how fast it's running, or it, and we set it on to about mid, in the middle of, you know, to five, one to five range, we set it about three on the trucks most of the time. So you're dropping. You know, it's a, a very minute amount, you know. You can open up a glass, open the door, and you can run it out like they used to do back in the day. You don't have to do that. You start the truck, the spin will stop. You know, you're not wasting it at an intersection. I mean, first year when we got the new truck, they hadn't put the computer in because mm -hmm. it was going to delay the truck another four weeks, and when it comes in a day, of course, no storm going on with that. So we can put it on the following year, but the guys are used enough to shut stuff off, and, you know, when it you know, when they were using them, so. Cool. Uh, that's yeah, it's, it's, you spend the money when you buy, you build a truck, but you save the money when you're not wasting you know, the salt and stuff like that. So that's, you know, 
and I don't know if that will happen with the sidewalk club, but you know, if you drop the water salt on the sidewalks, you're going to drop it up there. Some who had the computers in them, but I just, we, I just Do you have a lot of sidewalks to do? We don't have a lot of sidewalks, and that's, again, why we bought the equipment we bought instead of buying a sidewalk-specific machine. Sidewalk-specific machines cost $150,000 to $200,000. We're headed out to Dover. Wow. Dover has them, some of them has them. I've them. seen them in Dover. Most of them are made for. Uh, there's one brand that's made in Germany. Try to get parts for that today, or any kind. Of, that was always an issue. Uh, and you, have, you know, but you're talking $150,000, $200,000. machine we bought is $50,000. And we'll get the sidewalks cleared just as well, if not better than some of them expensive machines. So, and like I said, we don't have a lot of sidewalks. Just that our skate stick, our skate stick was too wide for the sidewalks. Just so in case you didn't know that. But I don't know if you guys are well set. Um, I am. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, George. Thank you, George. Uh, and you guys need to go out and check. You know, we still haven't talked about with you guys. We haven't set what we want to have a plan, so. Right. We want to look at them before we get something on the ground. Mm -hmm. I've done them once, but I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you a call. Yeah, I think, I mean, to look at the roads and see where we're going to go with stuff. So, I mean, it's, we all going to be on the same page. So, so, so get your list, George. Huh? Um, I live with town truck. Is there any likelihood we get estimates um, on that? I think. I, I can, when we make a decision on what roads we want, mm -hmm. we want to do, I can get estimates. Okay. So I think he doesn't want to, you know, and I don't blame anybody for wanting to come out and give us a handful of estimates. Of course, by the time he gets running all his numbers and stuff, that takes a lot of time. They don't mind giving us estimates on something we plan on doing. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, and again, I know you people are talking, possibly going out to bids. The price that he gives us when he looks at the roads are going to be a part lower than the bid price. If he goes out to bid, those prices are going to change because they want our work because of the time of year we have our budgets. I'm talking Brox or any time or any of uh, these other companies to give you a better price. To so is that the company you work with, Brox? Right now. And, you know, Chris has been the salesman for the town of Rollins with, with Pike prior to here to now. And he told me, he says, I can give you a real good price, or I can give you a bid price. So, you, you know, it's last year our prices, well, I don't know, you probably didn't, but our prices went down mid-year because he didn't have, he didn't bid that price, he gave us the ongoing price. If that would have been a bid price, that price would have not gone down. But he wants out of work. And, you know. How long has it been since we've seen a competitive bid, though? I, I get prices from different, four different companies since I've been here. So I was in a bid process. I asked for their quotes, and by far, Chris's prices have always been superior to most. Um, Could we do that again? Can we do that again? Just ask them to give us a quote. You know what I'm I can, but uh, that, that, they mean? they know we're playing the game too. You know, these guys all talk. Because yeah. as soon as I did that the last time, Chris says, "You asked me for a price, and now you're asking Libby Scott for a price." Well, Libby Scott buys their payment for Pike. Yeah. Okay. Chris works for Pike. Okay. He says, now you want me to give you a real price? And Libby Scott was still higher than his free, you know. He said, I, I, I'm working with the same companies. You know, and a lot of towns do that. They work, they try, you know, loyalty. Goes a long way. A very long way. And I, with the extras and stuff like that, you know, I'm, yeah. Again, we got a bid a price from Chris for climate roll. We're two thousand under that price, you know. It's not a lot of money, but it's still it, it's, it's down, you know. Uh, my only issue with that is, um, it's like going to buy a car, you know. I mean, they want you to buy on the spot, you know, without really doing any homework. So we, we don't sign contracts with Chris until we decide to do the job. You know, we put off, how many times have we put off a project? Which run? We held off. We did Sligo, the first half of Sligo, we found out we had the money. 
They own the rock contract. That's when they actually brought the, brought the price. So how long have we been using him? I've been dealing with Chris Matheson, the salesman, with Brock now, which with Pike, since I've been here. My, my four years. So, when was the last time you got competing bids? And he was Chris then. He was a salesman with them for every year. For how long before? With Jeff St. Jean. Oh, okay. So, but how long has it been since we evaluated other options? Or have we just been going with Brock for the last few years? No, we just got very Brock. Okay. okay. So, we got bids for the year before then? Yeah. No, no, Chris worked with Pike. Yeah. The years before that. But I had a quote from Brox, and I had a quote from Pike, and I had a quote from Levy Scott to do our roads. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have other small companies around that can do a road, but again, loyalty to the town, well, I mean, loyalty to the, the uh, company, <coughs> see, that's a lot of money. And that's my opinion. You know, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I think what Kim's saying, though, is one thing about Quinn's asking is. Maybe I'm, I guess I asked the same question is if we have a, a, a road, be a tie, if Kim's asking, I believe you're asking, you still get, you still have competitive, you get two or three quotes, it's just usually Brox is the cheap, cheaper one you go with. Or are you saying that you just go with Brox for a price? I it's have Chris price for, I've had Chris give us a price because his prices have been, He's been loyal to us. Yeah, I get that. Okay? Yeah. He, he wants to be guaranteed the business. He wants to be guaranteed the work, so he gives us a good price without giving us a bid price. I get that. So, well, if, we're, we're, if you say you're going to go out, you, you're, you're going to put an ad out for competitive bids. Yeah. You're not going to get that same price. Okay. Okay, I, I understand all that. So, if you want to do that. No, no, no. But what I, what I just want to make sure I understand is I'm just going to make hypothetical. We're going to. We're going to Pay the town hall black lot out here. And Brox comes in and they say it's 14 grand. Okay, so you go 14 grand. Right? Just hypothetically, at least hypothetically. Yeah. There's never any there's never any outside like, okay, I know he's cheaper, it's 14 grand, the other people are gonna be 20, so I'm not gonna even get a quote. No, that's I'm that, just asking. That, that's a whole different ballgame. Look, you're talking about parking lot. Okay, we're over. I had three different quotes in a parking lot. Brock's didn't want the job because they'd been high. Okay, well, then, uh, I shouldn't Brock's have used the job let's, let's say a We had KC, we had, you know, Polly we all had prices on that. Yeah, let's KC just say a gave us a good price. Okay. Yes, all right, so you do get, you don't I, get just one price. 99% of the time we don't on a lot of stuff. Okay. It, like I said, you want to try the option of going out to bid, we'll all see you at the same time. I don't think you're going to, Chris told me, there's a difference between a bid price and a loyalty price. Okay. And any company has that. Okay. Because if, if, if he's pricing it for you, he's assuming he's getting the business and he's willing to put the work into it and put right. the price together, right? I just, every, I once in a while, we, like, every once in a while, we should do a check. You know what? what? Yeah. If you want, no. I'm going to stay right out of that. You make a bid list out and send it out to three different companies, and you see what you get. Okay. Yeah, I think when you're spending two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you know, I think you, you need to get more. Uh, no, price. I, I I agree. I don't. I'm not against that at all. But I, you know, I, I'm just telling you that. Okay. Duly noted. Mm -hmm. No, I know what you're saying. I just. Yeah. I don't get nothing from it. And, you know, nothing else. It's just that he's. He knows the town, he knows our roads, he's been down our roads, yep. and actually pointed out which roads could go before the other roads. Not too many people are going to come out and spend the time to do that, and then, you know, well, they get shafted once, you're not going to see it again. Okay. But, yep. you know, sure. right. but uh, I, I, it's not my money, so, you know, it's... So, you know, I'm just trying to say whatever we can say. Right. No, and I agree. I'm simply, George. I'm just like, like, say we can do Main Street. And, and you know, the town administrator comes in, they're going to probably want to do the same thing, put it out to bids. But, you know. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. But, you know, like I said. Okay. Hey, forget that for the minute. You look at the paint in the hallway. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll get on. We have two outside. You want us to paint. <laughs> no. I can paint the front of that. We're gonna, we're gonna be out here spraying lines, you know. <laughs> Tape it off. Sprayer.
Thank you. Thank you. I, I want you to, you know better than I do, but you know, one thing can be here quicker than we know, too. It can be here in November, so. I don't believe in weathermen. That's the job I want. Well, yeah, me too. Guaranteed yeah. income. Um, yeah, so I'm going to bring and this up real quick. So we have a PO in front of me that was sitting here. Passed on from Chuck. It was given to Chuck from Mark, who is a cemetery mm -hmm. um, trustee. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to make a motion for PO 2033 to Janato's Landscaping for the mowing of Newtown and Old Town Cemeteries. Yes, please. $1, now that it's quiet. Okay. Um, second. All in favor? Aye. Jack, this is like a three time year. We're doing things, making sure you know that. Mm -hmm. You get that? Yes. Okay. Huh? I was asked to look at the slot window store. Is that okay now? Um, it seems to be working fine, but it, you just have to lift up on the latch a little bit. But try, you can, if you want to close it and try it, you can. I have the keys. Yeah. You have a locksmith too now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. Yep. Um, so, um, so the, the town clerk tax collector, I actually updated the agenda a bit to note that um, we're going to schedule on that. that. Yep. Um, so that yeah, there's we'll schedule that for the next meeting. And then the heating peak gathering is still... No, um, no, but I meant to call them today. Um, it's still on my list. No. Um, so, Phil, the guy, did you pay me? Do we know if you got paid? Yep. Okay. It was just because well, he called me a couple times well, last week. And the I check was left by him. So I think... You must have, because I called him and I called... Yeah. I called Tom, I mean Tom, Dan, and said, um, ask Dan first to speak to the tree. I didn't see it on the selection. Yeah, he yeah, probably so. came and got it. I called him probably and said, if you want to come and get it for one. Yep, we're good. All right, so that's a done issue then. Um, yeah. And then, post insurance is a kind of bond funds. That's the one that... Right, yeah, I get... Copies. I'm not, I'm not I'm so sure of. Okay. Is, you want to that, Jack? Yeah, I'll submit that too. That's from Paula. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's a uh, bond that we've had for a long time. If you go to the second page, the second paragraph, it yep. explains what it's being used. So, she's so already done all the paperwork. Okay. All right, so it's just really a transfer of, mm -hmm. it's right. really paper, right? Right. It's done. Is there anything we need to do? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, what, what are, uh, no, go ahead. So something came up, um, and I, I don't know that we have enough information about it. We probably need to um, talk to Chuck. I know what you're going to say. Okay. Um, what with Douglas reimbursement? Oh. Um, at the end of the year, I yeah. heard that we are supposed to reimburse them mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. some number of dollars. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a hundred thousand. Why? Ninety thousand. Wow. Um, it was a. An abatement. How do I explain it? Right. Um, they had an abatement. It was. So I, you have some input on this. I do, so but you want to put your input first, or put my input. Uh, as I understand it. Their um, certificate of what is it? Where's, it's waiver. Waiver because they're a nonprofit, right? Uh, and it doesn't get taxed, and that has to be the town has to receive it every year by a certain date, and um, they didn't realize that it had come in. So we that certificate, so, so we, we told them they had to pay taxes. And so they paid the taxes, and now we have to reimburse them. Because we found it afterwards? Mm -hmm. it was, yeah, it was, I think it went to court. Or it went court. to, uh, it was accidentally mishandled by the town administrator. Um, I'm trying to think about how the board came up. It was handled, when the paperwork came to town administrator, it wasn't filed correctly. And then... I don't want to be misquoted, but it went minutes. to the tax bill shouldn't have been issued, and they paid it. But it was 
I don't know, go back to all the, all the emails, but it was, it was, it was communicated between the tax collector and town administrator and town administrator. I don't know. Town administrator was under the belief that it should have been, because the paperwork was lost, it didn't get filed. So, so I guess my question is. It was a big mistake. So how much do we owe them? And uh, it's two, I'm going to say something like for three years. Two fifty over three years. So they gave and, time and to pay they, back. they yeah, gave the town quite a bit of time to pay it back. Where, do, where can we find um, the arrangement on this? And oh, where is that money coming from? It's I coming from it it's, our budget. It's, it's coming from a mistake. It's coming see, from something. But I don't see it coming out of like out of the budget. It's not listed in the budget. Yeah, I don't. I get. I get. I yeah. It's, he must what have some mean? documentation on it. Yeah, we'll get to it. It was a big deal when it happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll try to work with Chuck to get some more details. Yeah, I, I wish I had more information on this stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I'm. As so a, that's not accounted for anyway. I didn't see anyone. No, I. I, I got to figure it out. Okay. We'll I yeah. Okay. Um, That's all I had about. There is some information about that. You know, maybe I can dig into it deeper too. But yeah, I'll it was missing the paperwork, and I'm trying to think. What's so? What's our payment schedule? This do you know? It's like a, no. It's for three years. Two. How much it's each like year? Hundred thousand, hundred thousand, and I go say fifty. I think it was like two hundred fifty thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. No interest. No interest. So, that's good. No, it's, but it's, it's bad, right? Okay. I got to figure out what But legal yeah. fees. I can dig into that too. I can go back to the budget off. Of well, I'll just check and include everybody. When was, do we know the time frame so I can dig back, dig back on the emails? Yeah. I can find the time frame. All right. I found some interesting this stuff. This is year the other day. two. Okay. All right. Uh, and a lot of the stuff too. This is year two. Some of the stuff was done in non public, which may have been handled, should have been handled that way. All right. Um, but yeah, that's something yeah, that this this was never in any of the minutes. I know, and it probably should have been. Interesting. Okay, so MRI, I think we're um, moving on that for today. If you're not in public, you don't know about it either. So. No, I. I'm sorry. sorry. So we're good for MRI today. Yeah, it, it was interesting. I think they brought some interesting stuff to the table. The only thing I wanted to mention is just the eighty dollars an hour fee. You know, that's a point. Um, well, it's right. only two days. Right, at 14, but like, we have now, about 14, 16. Let me tell you what we have left in the. Quite a bit of it. Well, let's see here. So, to be exact, yeah. Um, well, well, that one. Well, 30, 30, well, 20 grand. So, Budgeted for the admin support. Yeah, that's an under admin support. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, we're budgeted for 101.065, and year to date we're at 89.54. So that doesn't that include Salman and Chuck? It does Chuck. include Salman and Chuck. What's really one week. <laughs> no, but what was their rate when we, they were doing the police chief thing? Okay. I don't know. Um, I thought it was about the same. I thought it, no, I thought it was like um, a total, though. They contracted for us certain amount. Six no, months, fixed I amount. think. I think it was a fixed amount for, for six months. Or something. Yeah, it was. It was a fixed amount. It was three days a week and a fixed amount. But it worked out to about the same eight bucks an hour. So this is really more. It seems like they're more willing to negotiate, or like be flexible about what we need them for. Yeah. Um, let's see what that means. And one thing we struck up that I found interesting too, and, and the previous board may have put too much responsibility on the town administrator for all the financials. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think we got to divvy up things and look at things. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, how much was administration 
and how much was the select board. Yeah, we were doing select board's job. Yeah. All right. Agreed. I think I should retire. Mm -hmm. Two more times on select board. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> so, um, you go if, so it's about fifty five hundred dollars a month for two days a week. Yeah, I have 1450, 1450 a week, roughly. Um, so, yeah, that's basically two days a week or a month. And only is about 5500 So, if we end up going for three months, like they said, it would be a three-month window. It's, it's, it's going to be a three-month window. I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be three it's months. It's going to expend that budget. Though. Yeah. It's going to over-expend it, actually. But, Plus the recruiting services. Um, but what about her salary? What about Caroline's salary? Out of the, oh, that's what's left of it. I see. That's just left of it. Spend it was twenty grand. I got it. You know, okay. It's not as big as I thought. It's twice. Two thirds of it was already expended more than that. Okay, I got you. Yeah, because we had. Uh... Right, so Selma and Chuck um, also come out. Uh, I can probably kind of come up with some numbers. Um, well, if you just, I mean, if it gets overexpended, it gets overexpended. You know what? It, it, I don't know what we want to talk about now, but I, we definitely need two days. Mm -hmm. I mean, minimal. Yeah, two days. No, I think we will. I think yeah. I think we will. My opinion is we sleep on tonight because I mean the information they gave us is good. I just want to. Con I, I, sometimes I'm analytical, like, like you. We got to think stuff out. Yeah. Um, one night works. We're, we're doing budget tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Um, tomorrow's Yeah, but the other thing I have is so are we. The budget for 2022 is high. The fund balance. Um, mm -hmm. So I got those from Paula. Um, yep. She gave me the balance. So we need to consider those as part of what we want to fund sit for. Um, so I just I put those out there um, okay. since it came in an email. So um, what we, I think we do need to know is like a revaluation cost. So you know how much we have funded um, funded for that now, and how much. Because it's a revaluation year next year. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to know what that's going to end up costing us. So we probably at least have to reach out to Avatar. Maybe now's the time to talk to the MRI about their services as well. However, I'm sure there's a big transition to move from one company to another. Yeah, yes, I agree 100%. So I'm just, hypothetically speaking, it's not going to be next year. It may not be next year. It may not be next year, but when the reevaluation happens, if it, 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 we we, it, it is five years, and I'm going to say right, yeah. three or maybe four now. I think we're no, four next year. Well, I think it was 17. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, next year. Next year's five. Okay, so so this is where I thought we had this is where I guess I'm, I'm thinking out loud, but we might need some guidance. But this is what I foresee mm -hmm. hypothetically is House of Rollins for five years ago. I mean, just look at when I moved for the little ranch that would have sold for 225000 sold for three seventy five. Mm -hmm. So if things stay the way they are, they come on to the evaluation. How I foresee it is, if it's done right, the houses should be valued more expensively. Mm -hmm. So that means the tax base is going to go up because if you no. if you have a no no, no. why not scale, if, you have, um, if your house value goes up, mm -hmm. um, your property tax rate will come down because it's the basically what you need to fund the town. So they, it's just it's an adjustment for right. both sides. So but you can, yeah, I see what you're saying, but, but, but I mean, if somebody has a $300,000 house mm -hmm. and it's been undervalued for three yeah. years because, and now it's only a $600,000 house, it has to change the tax rate. It changes the value of the property, for sure, um, but the tax, the overall tax rate um, is really adjusted to your tax base. Mm. So your tax base goes right, up. Right, instead of 65 percent, it's 50 percent now. Yeah, because okay, I got that. I, but and I can tell there's got to be some kind of give for that. So in so I sent this week. I sent the tax rates for the state. If you look at that, there's um, it's called the total. Oh, here it is. Um, so it's a big ass number. Commitment. So and we can get clar clarification on this, but you really your adjustment is to that total commitment, like what you have to. For to run the town and the school. Um, so 
that's where the tax rate could go down, and I think we've all seen it. That when it has, when the property school. values go up, tax rate comes down, and vice versa. Yep. Um, so speaking look of back just, at your tax records five or ten years ago, and you'll see that it might have been higher, but then it was lower because it's all an adjustment. Okay. Um, speaking of that, have we have we got any concrete stuff in school board yet about the budget? Because that's a big part of it. No. Okay. All right, you can flip over. More budget. So, um, so we can talk some more. And actually, maybe tomorrow, I'll, tonight maybe I'll send out an email to Chuck about the last reevaluation cost. And yeah, we should, we should find that out. Yeah. And, and maybe reach out to Avatar, too, about anticipating. No, the, other person, the other person you can reach out with on that hospital thing, because it was, it was a couple of years that assessment was turned over to the town administrators when that happened. And she, she could probably give you a tax budget, probably give you a fairly good history of what happened and what the consequences were. Okay. This is um, I think the Avatar contract is for that evaluation. Yes. And then they just split the money into by five. Oh, okay. And oh. that's that's why you're okay. Putting some in every um, yes. Well, <laughs> Okay, so we don't, that doesn't really tell us what the cost is, but what we're funding it for. So you're saying that if we look at that cost and multiply it times five years back, that's what they're anticipating? I think so. Four. Well, how do they do Four years. Four. Four? Because they don't do it the year they're reevaluating. Okay. I wonder how they know what the cost is going to be like four or five years out, though. Because they, they, they sign a contract and, you're, and it's contracted for four years for the reevaluation. So they take and divide it up by four, and that's what the evaluation, that's what they are charging you for the reevaluation. They're not going to charge mm -hmm. you more than that. That's what they charge they you for the reevaluation. That. Yes. That's kind of not good planning. <coughs> no. They can make more money. Yeah, I know, I agree. Wow. Well, that's why, and, and we're lucky that they take it over four years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, overall, Overall, overall here, Avatar does a fairly good job, but you know, that's asking them because it's all good. Just like Tom, there's always room for competition. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they've had the market for a while. Yeah, I think when I think about the system, though, um, how many companies are out there that do this? Five. Not many. How many? Five. I think so. What were you saying? Um, just um, sure. oh, the migration process. Jack understands yeah. IT. The migration process to go from one company to another, then all the tax yeah. rates mm -hmm. transferred to yeah. a new company. That's a very expensive process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. That's something to think about. And yeah. things yeah. fall through the cracks in that, too. Yeah. Well, I understand they have fairly good customer service to Avatar. I mean, they're always reaching out, so. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. You want to do any schedule for additional <coughs> split board budgets? Um, I, no, I think we, we can decide tomorrow, depending on how Perfect. we progress. Um, just so you guys know, I, I got last minute. I'm taking off Thursday for San Diego. Okay. And I won't be back. Do we have a meeting next Monday? Mm -hmm. um, I won't be no, back, probably. No, not a regular meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, what's your date? Um, 17. You're yeah. leaving Thursday. I'm leaving Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have Maybe a meeting one. scheduled for next Monday. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's awkward. Good, it works out. What? It's an awkward. It works out. If I come on the fly, we're going to come across the room. Um, just so that that's why a lot. Well, well, I'll, I'll let you guys know. In the November, I'll go to so. I'm here in November. Okay. All right. So now I think we're good. Um, we'll okay. talk more about SIP tomorrow. And then, Rollins and Water, the Sustic Tour for proposed projects. I'm just going to let you guys know I went out Saturday and looked at that bike. I showed you a picture. I was like, Oh, you already went? I, I know. Well. Okay. It's um, kind of ironic, I'll just tell you a quick story, I went, and I thought I knew where I was, and I pulled over the side of the road, and I was walking out across a dam, yeah. up behind the region, where I thought I was going up, where the Port of Wild was, I thought it was up there, yeah. and I was walking out there, I saw Allison, she's like, oh, hey, okay. what you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm going to go check out the pipe, she's like, it's not there, it's over by Pines, she says, follow me, so she took me up right where it is, you walk up a little, it's a farm road that connects uh, Pine, and whatever one is on Pine, the school's on, it goes into there. And literally, there's a steel pipe that's pretty heavy duty steel pipe, but it really runs 45 feet. And a lot of it's like a big gully underneath it. Um, but you know, the things that we got to think about, us as a select board, is if 
First, we've got to understand the Megan Rescue Plan a little better. And second of all, we as a board have to think. That's going to be used for multiple plans. Well, we have to yeah. think about how it uses too, is okay. That's a good way And this isn't, this isn't bad, good, or indifferent. I'm just saying, okay, if we, we accept that, say, 100 and whatever amount of money, 200,000, say. Is it fair for us to accept it just in for, the, for a small, you know, 600 people for the town? Well, it is Because it it's a water district. Well, it is. So, um, the it's a water district project. expecting maybe some money out of that as well for the new staffing. What was the, the other one was cheap, a lot cheap, right? 80,000 or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, the new staffing plan was cheap. Yeah. 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 Yeah
geez, coming in today with the meeting, it was like, you know, it's a nice night out there. Coming down Main Street. I must, have, I must have seen a dozen people walking. Yeah. I'm like, what a nice little community, you know? And you used to think Stockton Circle was longer, but the way it's grown in now is not everyone. What are you going to say? What signs? Oh, no Main Street signs. Yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. so there's a copy of uh, I don't know. Looks like the same thing. So I each. Um, so you know what? I have a question. Okay. About this post issuance um, certificate. Which one you have the one we just gave you? The one from Paul. Okay. Did this get signed or is what happens with all this? This is all of You guys know what happened with that? The she, she, she said that she had sent it in and it's all been taken care of. It's all been taken care of. Yes. Okay, Signed so um, okay. okay. That's all I'm nope. to This I is all I want 100 so I want to make sure you have the right answer. Yeah. Okay. But did they say on that 59000 they could reduce it? Yeah, um, John said probably by fourteen grand if you don't do the access reader cards um, on all these doors. Just say the record. Like so have we already committed to these people to nope. do something? Mm -hmm. no. This has been open um, since the warrant was approved last year. Um, it's the, it's the, the one article for I think sixty grand, sixty thousand um, yes. for phone and security updates. We just haven't made a commitment to a contact yet. So is there um, is there any community input on? Yes. Um, all right. Any right, com Community input before we adjourn. Any community input online? Any community input from the group? Nancy? Yes. Um, when you're talking about breaking up the encampment, you better be prepared for your welfare to go up because the minute they you the minute you move them, they can come in as long as they're on Rollinsford's property, they can come in and, and ask for assistance. It's not, well, they have to be here a week yeah. or whatever. That's, you know. that's the concern about letting the people come from really and over because then they immediately become ours. Yeah, it's a big problem. And as far, I, do, I am not quite sure, but I think this is year two for paying Wentworth Douglas. I think last year was the first year it was I, at I, the end of last year. I believe you're incorrect about that. It, would this be the 50000 this, this would be the first year. But we'll check. Mm -hmm. but it's we don't know what fund that's coming out of. Yeah. yeah we need okay. To that out. Maybe it was just discussed last year and that's... Um, so yeah, it was discussed... Uh, was that the end of 19? It was in the, at the end of 20. Hmm. So the end of 20 would have been... It would be like last December's tax bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that would have been one. But they deferred. <coughs> I think they gave us the this year. All right. Um, so a few takeaways, but it's only a few, so I don't necessarily... Like, <laughs> oh, look, Jack's getting his paper ready. Um, so, so things outstanding we want to um, try to check on is uh, I'll talk to um, Chuck about the road maintenance adjustment bill that um, George mentioned. Yeah. Um, so the paint the front door and wall. Um, so we mentioned it to George. Do we want to see? Let me let me talk to you. Okay. Um, Richard. Oh, I don't need talk to George. Um, George and I are on an even keel right now. Excellent. Make a change. Um, so, I, know, I, I realize that. Um, so, two other things um, is the one worth of payment. So, we need background information on that. Um, I, I can send an email to the tax collector and Chuck. Yeah, copy both. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then. Just looking for a little more insight what happened. Yeah. And then the only other thing is just confirmation on the revaluation cost to us to make sure that we are doing the right thing with the reserve fund um, for the budget this year. So, um, I can send there just a couple of emails. I'll send out emails. And I got on my list uh, Primex. Oh, yeah. And Brock's. Look at the reimbursement. Okay. When's our next select board meeting? 
So we have a, the budget workshop tomorrow. I will. And then we don't meet again until uh, the 25th. So I'll send a note out to Dan and Andrea. Coming in that day. Sure. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll be here that day. Right. If everything goes away, I'm flying back from Phoenix that weekend for grade six. It's too much travel. Yeah. All right, sounds so good. I think I'll be, I, I'm planning on being here. It'll be work. Uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.